Again, it's right on that midcourt line. Now, Butler has it up ahead. Got numbers. Mitchell with the left hand scores. Welcome to Sikkim 365 Radio. Sikkim 365 Radio is presented by IdealMRI.com. High quality MRIs for $497 or less. IdealMRI.com. Your health is important. So is your budget. Over the middle, he has Edner in for a touchdown. The 3 o'clock hour is sponsored by Waco Custom Marketplace. Meats, sweets, Texas treats, and a cut above the rest. 425 Lake Air Drive, Waco. Prescott going in zone. And it's caught for the touchdown. Dalton Schultz. Now here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. So imagine if you were a Philadelphia 76ers player, coach, organization and or fan they blew a 26 point lead tied for the third largest blown lead in playoff game history or at least excuse me over the last 25 postseasons they blew the lead last night i know that has nothing to do with maybe local but i just thought that was interesting i saw kind of the twitter trend of my god this is awful and uh, they now trail the hawks three games to two they led by 25 points with 315 left in the third and gave up 51 points in 15 minutes. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm kind of intrigued by these playoffs because it's not Lakers, Warriors. It's mm-hmm. not the same old, same old. And there's going to be some new blood. Although, I guess the Nets would be new blood. But I guess of all the teams that are in it, I don't want the Nets to win because of Kevin Durant. But he's unbelievable. So, yeah, I'd like to see, like, it's unfortunate you're a 76ers fan thinking, like, oh, it's 83 to, it's 83 to 58 right yeah. now. Oh, that's fine. Well, yeah, I'm not a big Nets guy either, but Kyrie and KD already have rings. Uh, I guess the really only thing preventing me from, uh, or the only thing, I guess, keeping me maybe going anti-Nets is that Harden doesn't have a ring. Uh, but, yeah, the other two already do, so if they can get one together, they're certainly one of the, the favorites to do so, uh, with the Lakers out especially. But, uh, yeah, uh, that, was a, that was a choke. That was a big-time choke. You had your franchise's greatest player, arguably in history, Allen Iverson, there to witness it, and... Uh, yeah, you should be up three to two, and instead you've got that hangover of knowing you had it in the bag and you just let it go, and that's an awful feeling as a sports fan, especially in the postseason. U.S. Open golf continues. They're in the first round. It was delayed a little bit because of fog. Art Strickland, Baylor alum, will join us. He's at Torrey Pines. He had a fog delay. Brooks Kepka is out in front along with uh, Matthew Wolf, I think, uh, Vander Shoffley, and uh, also, uh, also Patrick Rogers, who's a young uh, guy that's uh, in the middle of all that. There's a few others. To, uh, Phil Mickelson, who won the championship, the PGA's off to a rocky start, got him back to two over, uh, and uh, kind of fortunate that he might even be just two over, but he's kind of scratching and clawing. Jimmy Walker, by the way, from Baylor, t- uh, through 10 holes is even par. He played well last week at Memorial, made the top 10, so he's on right now in the top 15 at that point yeah craig's uh under the radar pick webb simpson has not had a good first 12 holes Craig no, always has seven well. over oh my lord i did not know that. i have not really looked at the overall leaderboard it's amazing because you know we just pick somebody and you know who knows like tony finau i have him he's three over par at the u.s open that's not going to kill you unless you end up at five six or seven eight over by the end of the day tomorrow. I wanted to share the uh, the wealth is all. I intentionally <laughs> didn't want to stress over this this weekend, and I won last time, so I just felt like sharing the gold, you know? That's what that's why we like you, Craig. You're very generous. Yeah, thank you're, you. You're a good yeah. dude. So I, I do think about the U.S. Open, for people who don't, who, who may, you know, what's the difference, Masters, PGA, U.S. Open. The U.S. Open, the USGA, sometimes I think, sits in like a room, and they say, okay, here's what we're going to do to this course. And they say, okay, well, let's do this, but do it like 5% more than you normally would. And so, you know, whether it's, I can't, what was the course that had like the fescue that was terrible a few years ago? So if you were in it at all, you were going to, you essentially need to hit your ball with a weed whacker. It was ridiculous. Uh, Yeah, there's some that if you are in the rough, you cannot advance the ball. Yeah. If you do, all you do is make it worse. You have to go sideways. I don't want it like that. I want it to be penal, but I don't need it to be. Like the British Open has some of those pot bunkers or those bunkers you have to go sideways. Uh, and, and that's kind of part of the history and tradition 
of a lot of the open courses. All right, I saw this last night. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but the ESPYs released their list of the various categories, and the Baylor men's basketball team is among eight, I think seven or eight, that are up for best team. Okay, I don't know if they'll win it. They probably don't have a large enough base, even as dominant as they were. So which of these teams will beat them out? The Stanford Cardinal women's team. No. No. Alabama's football team. No, they've done it too many times. They shouldn't, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised because it's Alabama, but they shouldn't, no. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That one uh, was legitimately. That one probably would uh, because it's got Brady and it's an NFL team, but I don't know that they necessarily should, uh, but they probably would. Seattle Storm. No. No. Oklahoma Softball. No. No. There's three of the seven are women's champions. Uh, L.A. Dodgers. No. I'm not, yeah. But, well, it's their first title in a long time. So the yeah. First so, title is also a wonky season. So, yeah. like, that to me kind of takes away some of it. Now, you could say that about Baylor's season, but not really. They had to cancel some games, but they still played a boatload of games. They played the entire tournament. They played the Big 12 tournament. I know baseball had their playoffs, but, I mean, they weren't even at home parks. They were, you know – so it bubbled up and and so yeah i mean i could see that because it was the first in a long time but you'd be giving it to them because it was the first in a long time not because they were necessarily the best team overall all right so usually the best team is the best story yeah. that's usually how they pick the espies so if you look at this best stories look oklahoma softball everybody thought they were going to win it the whole year Right, they they were the favorites the entire yeah, time. Yeah, uh, the Seattle Storm. I I couldn't tell you what their story was, which means there's not a story. Uh, and I'm not knocking them, but Stanford uh, women's basketball. I, I I mean, again, you're probably not gonna you know tell me some kind of big story about them. But the Buccaneers, Dodgers, and Baylor to me have the have the story in that the Dodgers won for the first time in, in over 30 years. The uh, the Buccaneers, you know, had it's a the team. Brady story is the NFL, yeah, they're yeah. powerful. Yeah, they had the, yeah. you know, and then, and then of course, Baylor is the story. And I know that we're making a documentary about it, but still, yeah. it's the re- they're not making documentaries about right. a lot of these other things. Let's do the this. Seattle Storm last year played 22 games. Yeah. So, no, I'm not counting that All as right. far as best team overall. No. T- text us or call us, 254-339-1122. Former Baylor offensive line coach Randy Clements, most recently at Ole Miss, will join us at 330. Who of these teams, if Baylor is not the team of the year in the ESPYs, which is in July, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Stanford Cardinal women, Alabama football, Oklahoma softball, Seattle Storm, WNBA, or the Dodgers in Major League Baseball. Which of those six most likely if Baylor doesn't win, and Baylor's got to be one of the favorites, uh, will beat them out if they do. Tom Brady and oh, I, I, there's breaking news. Jared Butler. Big 12 just announced that Jared Butler is the male sports person of the year in the Big 12 Conference. Yeah, that's about right. He's an All-American. He was up for Player of the Year. He was the representative. He was also a part of that committee. Remember that athletic student-athlete committee? He was a part of everything. And not to mention, he just seemed to be about as good as you can get. Yeah, I mean, that's a big-time award. You know, it's it's uh, saying that you are, of all the male athletes in the entire conference, you know, you are the sports person of the year. So that's every sport. That's everybody involved, and uh, that's pretty impressive. And uh, you know, what a great honor and not a surprise in, in any way, really. But uh, still, great to get that officially. And I was expecting it because I just thought, who else is going to beat out Jared Butler for this award? He just seems primed for it. So I'm glad to see he actually got it. And just another notch in uh, the Baylor basketball program's belt this season. So that's Jared Butler, sports person of the year. Brady and Mahomes share the Madden, t- Madden 22 front. Okay, I got to tell you, this is in my view. Okay, both of them are fantastic, and they, they played in the Super Bowl. They've won each of the last two Super Bowls. It's the young and the old. It's the legend against the upcoming whoever in Patrick Mahomes. Why not just one face? Why Is this kind of like, are we are trying, is it the, uh, the old and the new? What is this? What's the theme here? I think it's just trying to do something different because they've done, I mean, you know, they've done different things. You know, they've had, a, you know, a Hall of Fame. They had Barry Sanders, and who was it with Barry Sanders on the, RG three, RG three, yeah, yeah. So they've had that. They've had. They've done lots of different things. But I, you know, I, I, I guess. Well, I mean, it's just different. They're just okay. trying to sell. They're just trying to sell more. I mean, they call it the MVP edition. The they've called it that like fourteen different times. I the feel reigning like. league MVP is coincidentally not on the cover. 
Yeah, why wouldn't it be Derrick Henry or someone yeah. like, uh, you know, some, there's a lot of options out there. Well, I, mean, uh, I mean, you mentioned Aaron Rodgers. I bet you Aaron Rodgers is not on it because they don't want to sell a bunch of Packers, Aaron Rodgers things, If which I don't think it's going to happen. That's, but, a, that's a very good reason. But if, but if Aaron Rodgers is playing for Denver all of a sudden, to me it then makes this will cover, yeah. you know. But they, right. have, they have done that. Before. But Mahomes was yeah. on just two years ago. Brady's first time ever, despite all of what he's done, was in 2000, Mad, or Madden 18. Oh, wait, you said first time ever, but then he was in 18. No, no. It's the first, it's the first time, it's the first cover for, for Brady, despite all of his years in the NFL, although his first cover became Madden 18. This is his second time. So they have two guys who have been on now. In the twice last three in four, years. Three or four yeah. years. That's, That's yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And it's, so I don't, I don't know. know. All right, Midway. We had Shane Anderson on Monday's show. We'll have their offensive coordinator. We don't usually have too many coordinators on because there's so many head coaching jobs. But this one's unique, not because it's just midway and we have their games, but also because Tommy Allison was recently the head coach at Robinson, took the job in Hallsville, was there for one year just east of Longview. He joins Shane Anderson's staff now as the offensive coordinator at Midway. I had a quick conversation with him. He's thrilled to be back in his home t- near his hometown or in near home, he'll join us today at 4 o'clock. Tommy Allison, I know they're very close to announcing the defensive coordinator, which is also a local flavor, but Paul Craig, Tommy That's Allison. Out is there. A, okay, uh, Lenoy Jones Jr.? Uh, senior. Uh, senior, I'm sorry. Lenoy Jones Sr. is the uh, defensive coordinator, along with uh, Ezra uh, Martinez. They're going to be co-defensive coordinators. Lenoy Jones, of course, played football at Grosbeck. Played at TCU and played in the NFL. Been at Midway for a long time. Yeah, and he's been there now under the last couple of coaches. Uh, Lenoy has, and it's probably it's his time, I think, to be calling plays on defense. Tommy Allison's a great hire for Midway. His offenses are are not easily stopped. So, yeah, Tommy Allison will be a good hire. Uh, that's you know an interesting one, and he's obviously got a lot of skins on the wall in Central Texas. I mean, Lenoy Jones has been around that Midway program a really long time now. Uh, going back to you know the first year I was here, we're going almost ten years back at this point, and I don't know how how long was he there before that? A couple of years, yeah. Yeah, so he's been nearly a decade uh, at Midway. So yeah, seems like it's probably about time, and uh, look forward to seeing what he does with that defense. So that's that. That's a, a high school story, the SP story, the Jared Butler Jared Butler story, uh, and, and a few others as well. We've updated you a little bit on the U.S. Open. Our guest lineup: Randy Clements, former Baylor offensive line coach. One of the best in the game. Uh, He'll join us at 3.30. He's in between right now. Ole Miss, he was on that staff with Lane Kiffin. We kind of discussed that yesterday. And now is kind of in between. He's getting paid through the end of the year by Ole Miss. So he could go anywhere. And uh, there maybe are an option uh, option or two for him. And uh, we'll have him 3.30. Tommy Allison at 4. And then Mickey at 4.30. Craig's off the radar. Art Strickland from the Torrey Pines U.S. Open layout. And course, and then Paul's five at five fifty-five, which is uh, wackiest bowl game names. Wackiest bowl game. I names. think I said best, but like your weird bowl game because names. of a game that's in L.A. named after a late night show guy, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, so all of that's coming up. Two five four three three nine eleven twenty two. Also, um, is this breaking news as well that I just saw from Adrian Wojnarowski, uh, Rick Carlisle who led the Mavericks to that championship 10 years ago, informed owner Mark Cuban today he will not return as their head coach next year. He had been the head coach of the Mavericks, two years left on his contract, 13 years. Donnie Nelson out, Rick Carlisle out, and there is a mass change in the front office yep, of it, the Dallas Mavericks. But Tim Cato's article was total BS, right, Mark Cuban? Okay. How much of this could be Carlisle, along with who's t- kind of trying to call the shots, but also he's just like, wait a minute, Donnie's gone too? Right? I don't know. That GMs and coaches, they change all the time. But this is a huge change in Dallas Mavericks. You know, it's a massive deal. And, uh, you know, that article the other day, I mean, Mark Cuban could say whatever he wants to. It wouldn't be the first time he's lied. And I like Mark Cuban, but uh, I think sometimes he does get a bit too full of himself. And you're a self-made billionaire. You know what? That probably happens on occasion. But at the same time, you know, to totally dismiss that article that would never have been published. I mean, it wasn't like the New York Daily News was printing that. It wasn't like it was, you know, some U.K. rag 
you know, that talks about the, the royal family all the time. This was, you know, two guys who follow the team pretty damn closely that know about the Mavericks and aren't going to put something like that out there if there wasn't anything to it. So for Cuban to call BS in the first place was suspicious. Uh, but now, in a matter of two days since that article has dropped or three days since that article has dropped, your longtime general manager has stepped away and now your longtime head coach who brought the only title in NBA history to your franchise has stepped away. So... I look forward to Mark Cuban's next tweet. It'll probably be about like Dogecoin or something stupid like that, but it should be about the Mavericks and what the hell's going on in his office because something's obviously not right. And, you know, you see all the NBA fans, and I mean, most of them are children anyways or just adults who are basically children. And so, like, the first five replies to this Wojnarowski tweet are, like, photoshopped Luka pictures in different jerseys, like he's in a Lakers uniform and a Bulls uniform and all that, even though he's apparently set to sign the Max extension. But, yeah, that's going to be on the minds of Mavs fans for the – inevitable future until the waters calm a little bit and i don't know how you calm the waters i don't know if it's a matter of just and booting this guy out and and getting rid of him which then would raise even more questions or it's the head coach that you hire i don't know the, tim mcmahon says that there was simmering tension between luca and, and rick carlisle i'm curious to see where rick Carlisle. Well, let's be honest now they won it 10 years ago and they mm -hmm. really they haven't won a playoff series since now having said that duke uh, uh, dirk was still around and still elite but they started to tear it apart right after they won the national yeah. uh, the, the nba title but now uh, i i thought that one of the things that there was going to be a change in the mavericks it would be that carlisle might move on but they all said the right things after they lost that series if, to the clippers if i'm the boston Celtics and brad stevens who's now their general manager I'm calling Rick Carlisle right now. Mm, they may have, maybe because they maybe have a they roster have. that they feel is pretty good, and Rick Carlisle's a proven championship coach. Well, Carlisle says after a number of in-person convos with Mark Cuban over the last week, today I informed him I'll not be returning as head coach of the Dallas Mavericks. That was solely my decision. My family and I have had an amazing 13-year experience working with great people in a great city. It has been an honor to work alongside. Mark sent Donnie, Finn, Keith, Dirk, J-Kid, and every player and assistant coach I've had here. Dallas will always be home, but I'm excited about the next chapter of my coaching career. And, yeah, I mean, there's going to be NBA teams who need a head coach that are already on the phone with Rick Carlisle for sure. And I'm not a big Rick Carlisle fan, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Paul, that Luca and him butted heads. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Luca butted heads with this dude in the front office. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised by any of that. Rick Carlisle's a bristly dude now. Like, he can almost be too overconfident in a way, like kind of kind of tough guy bully in a way. And it's one of those where it, it's like he's too smart for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he thinks he's too smart for you. I just – he's very bristly. And I can see how that would wear on some people, definitely. So, if that's part of it, that wouldn't be shocking to me. But all this is just very – uh, it's just a lot for Mavs fans to try to, to understand and, and get through. Because they're supposed to be on the, the rise with Luka and surround him with all sorts of things. By the way, Luka, on the loss of Donnie Nelson, uh, this is a story from Tim McMahon yesterday, I guess, late. Oh, this is this morning. Um, said it was kind of tough for me. Uh, I really like Donnie. I know him since I was a kid. He's one that drafted me. It's tough for me seeing that, but I'm not – the one making decisions here so he's gone rick carlisle who after they lost to the clippers said uh, in a title in a story i guess this is the dallas morning news confident about the future with the mavericks after another first round playoff loss and sometimes it's just good to gut it yeah i mean that's the thing he's been around for forever like i said he's very bristly i can see how a decade of that would wear on you ultimately uh going both directions they're not anywhere close to a title right now, although they are as close as they have been probably in a few years. Uh, but they do have some missing pieces. And, and maybe one of the missing pieces is just switching pieces and, and switching the piece at head coach. So get somebody in there who knows how to utilize Luka and then figure the rest of it out. But that's, that's your bread and butter right there. That young man is your bread and butter if you handle it correctly for the next decade. And that's the part that they can't screw up. All these other pieces – in and out of the front office, on the on the bench, whatever. I get it, Rick Carlisle's a great head coach, but ultimately, Luca's opinion is what matters. And I'm not saying let him hold the franchise hostage, but you definitely make him happy as you can. Well, they got to find the head coach. they got to find whoever's going to be the next president, director of basketball operations. Michael Finley's name's been brought up as somebody in the uh, upper management and uh, administration as well. So a lot going on. Uh, Naomi Osaka has pulled out of Wimbledon. She continues to want to just kind of 
decompress, veg out a little bit, uh, obviously dealing with a lot, as she's mentioned before, when she took herself out of the French Open with the controversy about whether she should meet with the media and the post-conference, press conference, whatever. So she's taken herself out of Wimbledon, uh, the number two ranked player in the world, and, and, and obviously a dominant player. One more thing, and then we break. The Bears have been at Soldier Field, Paul, for how long? Uh, almost since their inception. I don't know I when mean, they. I don't know when that opened, but they've renovated it, and they renovated it a few years ago. Uh, Ted Phillips, their president and CEO. CEO, we recently submitted a bid to purchase the Arlington International Racecourse property in Chicago. Our obligation to explore every possible option to ensure we're doing what's best for the organization in its future, if selected. This step allows us to further evaluate the property and its potential. And so Chicago could be getting a new football stadium. Which and if that's the case, yeah. will they go dome? You would think they'd have to. I don't, to. man. I'm I mean, telling like, you, Chicago it's an advantage, fans. But like, I know. But I mean, Minneapolis fans haven't had a dome in forever, you know, or haven't had an outdoor could stadium. Can you ever forever. think of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh in a dome? No. So no. I, I, and that's the way I look at it with but, Chicago. But I understand they get a Super Bowl. They're not going to get a Super Bowl with Soldier Field. I mean, and do I know they, though? Not, like, I mean, when's the last time Dallas had one? I mean, they might, they'll get one, but they'll maybe get one. No, you are promised. Uh, yeah, no, I get yeah. what you're saying. But the, you, when you build a new stadium in the NFL, within about a four- or five-year cycle, you're going to host a Super Bowl. That's part of the deal. And and but uh, So, you, you know, you're f afraid of the, the January weather in Dallas, but you're – Let's go to Chicago. Let's go to Minneapolis. Well, Let's go to... <laughs> part of the thing is Dallas wasn't ready for it. No, but well, that was 10 years it. ago. Yeah, yeah. Like One yeah. of the things about Dallas as well is that even though there are other places that have two large cities combined, Dallas and Fort Worth, they struggle with... It, it shouldn't, but they struggle with kind of how they do it. Well, I think Fort Worth needs to branch off from Dallas entirely. You know, I get the whole DFW thing like Minneapolis, St. Paul, or things like that. But Fort Worth and Dallas are different. And I think Fort Worth is far more of a unique town as far as, like, what they could present out there. They've got, you know, the, the stockyards and, and that whole thing. They, they Dallas is just like a – it's a cool city, but you can't really put your finger on why or what it's about or, like, it's – you know what I'm saying? But Fort Worth is like has an identity. Dallas doesn't really, to me, have an identity all that much. And Fort Worth, I think, would do well to probably promote itself more so than DFW sometimes. Yeah, and, I, I mean, I'm sure that Jerry will talk his way into a Super Bowl again someday. Oh, they, and they but, have a phenomenal place. It's, yeah. it's there for the but, taking. But, but like, the, part of the Jerry's problem isn't, isn't even – I mean, it's not even anything to do with the stadium or the Cowboys or how the city would present it. It's how how ready is the city and state for bad weather, which a decade after it happened, we're not can ready you, for it. Could you imagine if the arm ice again? Uh, I mean, so... Hey, Super again, Bowl teams, uh, just bring extra blankets because the electricity yeah. might go I mean, out. So, yeah. so that's part of the problem that, that the state of Texas but, will have. But also, Paul, they tried to do too much because that's what Jerry tried to squeeze, yeah. an extra 15 butts in the stadium, mm -hmm. and it collapsed. Yeah. And, Remember? Uh, yeah, it was that terrible. That was a bad scene. But they, uh, even without him doing all the, you know, that kind of stuff, that's, that's out of his control and all that but if chicago has a state a new stadium and even if it's outdoors because new york got it now i realize it, it's probably colder in chicago than it gets in new york even at its you know even in you know the same kind of time of year when they both get cold but they're used that to that wind but yeah. they're used to it so again and chicago i'll tell you what if you told the city of chicago they're going to host the super bowl they would knock it out of the park it yep. would be unbelievable enjoyed the time we were there i know it's a small thing the draft but we enjoyed it by the way richard deitch who covers a lot of sports and a lot of media uh becky hammond the time is now i don't know maybe mark cuban looks outside the box and i don't mean that <laughs> She's not qualified, but that would be uh, that would be a, 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 a ground groundbreaking hire if, in fact, that's who they if she's even on his radar. Well, a couple things on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you consider her. Uh, Luca, I know, has already spoken to Tim McMahon about one of their assistant coaches that he's high on uh, as potentially filling the slot. We know that typically never happens, though, right? That's why there's always the complaints about a lack of minority candidates because if they actually looked at the benches a little more often rather than the retreads there'd be a lot more guys you don't 
He's like, the Mavs just feel like they probably make a bigger splash and more of a name than go on the, you know, lesser known assistant route. But, you know, Becky Hammond, definitely give her an interview. Uh, definitely see what's going on. But absolutely, positively, do not do it just for the sake of doing it or doing it to try and look like you're doing something, you know, good and try, you know, don't do it for show. Do it because you're actually interested. That's all I ask. I agree. Do it for what is best. To, to, Do it for to what save is, her time. Yeah. Like, don't fool her. Yeah. Like, it's like when the NFL interviews the minority candidates and they, like, oh, well, we interviewed that black coach, so now we're done. Now we can really talk to who we want to talk to. Like, don't do that. Don't interview her just because she's a female. Interview her because you legit think she could be your next head coach. Give her that respect. Yeah, and uh, it's Jamal Mosley is the one that Luca has yeah. gone to bat for uh, that Tim McMahon brought up as far as a quote from him. When we come back, Randy Clements, most recently at Ole Miss, he was Paul. Where else? Florida State. Florida uh, State, and some. It was small, it Florida Atlantic. Or? No, he was the he and uh, somebody went to a small school. That was Levy down yeah. in the, Florida. The Florida no, State. No, Kendall was at Florida Atlantic. That's right. Yeah. All right. So that is now a, 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 an offensive line coach who's as good as anybody in the game. Who's now a free agent, so to speak. His contract runs through the rest of the year. Randy Clements, a part of that Art Briles run at Baylor. He'll join us next on Sikkim 365 Radio. Marco's Pizza looking for drivers, looking for those of you who want to be a part of the business, and looking for managers. And so what do you do? Go to marcos.com. Uh, locations, Marco's Pizza in Bellmead, China Spring, and in Woodway. And if you drop by there, tell them, hey, I heard this on Sikkim 365 Radio. Smokey told me you're looking for drivers. Hey, do you want to work? Are you looking for a job? Are you comfortable with what you do? You want to make extra money at night? Uh, my first job out of college, after I'd received a degree from Stephen F. Austin for about five or six months, was delivering pizzas. And that was back in 1981, and I made good money then. So I know you can make some good money now. And, by the way, deliver great pizza. Marco's Pizza, they deliver to here at Sikkim365.com in our great studios on 101 Elm and MLK. And they have all sorts of the great pizzas you want. I can go over them, but you know what they are because if you like pizza, there are numerous options. Marco's Pizza in China Spring, Bellmead and Woodway. From the first workout to the last practice, sports is an incredible and rewarding challenge. Hi, this is Dan Ingham with the First National Bank of Central Texas, and we're proud to support each athlete, every parent, and our educators. From families, small businesses, to the biggest industry, we're here to help. With remarkable products like our free First Mobile app, we've got banking ideas that fuel big dreams. That's the First National Bank of Central Texas. Familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Ben Erlinson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, knows that his most important goals are yours. That's why he takes the time to understand your needs, knowing you. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Ben Erlinson, 100 North 6th Street in Waco, 254 759 8533. Edward Jones, member SI. PC. Travel is back. Hit the road with big savings during the summer savings event at Richard Carr. The road is waiting. Explore America again in the space, safety, and luxury of a Buick SUV. And during the Richard Carr summer savings event, current Buick or GMC owners get 16% off a new 2021 Buick Encore, 13% on Encore GX, 9% on mid-size Buick Envision, or 13% on a full-size Buick Enclave. Summer travel is back at the summer savings event going on now at Richard Carr. At Richard Carr, we give you Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive wellness exams and complete men's health lab panels. High performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. 
In Texas, there's pea-sized hail and baseball-sized hail. Guess which one hit our house? We didn't even know where to begin, but we called our Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent, and he was so reassuring. He knew exactly what to do to get our house back into shape and our lives back to normal. Now, we're even more thankful for the roof over our heads. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Let Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch, or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you. Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming. Army, warm. Welcome home. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Are you a Sikkim 365 super fan? Then try out our premium subscriptions at Sikkim365.com. All right, here we go. This three o'clock hour. Randy Clements, and I've said this and I'll stick to it and I will never change my mind, is as good an offensive line coach that you've ever seen in college football. Most recently at Ole Miss, he's been at Florida State. He was a longtime offensive line coach at Baylor. And I consider Randy Clements a great friend as well. Not a good friend. We don't like text each other and call a lot. But we've stayed in touch over the years. And he joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Paul Catalina, David, and Craig Smoke. Clem, how you been? Great, guys. How you doing? Well, we're doing really, really well. I know right now you're kind of in limbo with Ole Miss no longer where you are. What options – I'm not asking you to give me who you're going to next, but are, do you have options ahead of you, or are you going to sit out the football season? Uh, you know, we're looking at a couple of things. Um, you know, you got a contract deal. You have uh, – you know, it's been the – the mid cycle of, uh, of coaching hires, it's just, you know, it's a little bit different situation than most guys go through. So uh, we're not, we're not quite sure right now. When you're under contract, like you are, even though you're not at Ole Miss, does that allow you some unique opportunities as well? If you wanted to go somewhere else as a coach, but not be under contract? Well, you would think so. Um, but you know, the way the contracts are worded and so forth, um, you know, you can get penalized if you do that, um, you know, without, quote, unquote, making a salary or whatever if you go to another school. So it's just it's, every contract is different, but uh, you just got to gotta make sure you protect yourself on some of that. You have uh, made a career out of being someone who, when you go somewhere, and you were here for a long time, but you're uh, – when the offensive line is struggling – you find out what people do well really quickly and where they fit and plug in. And uh, you can almost make anybody a center. I, I, I was always amazed <laughs> at, at how that happened. Where did you start noticing you know, the, the nuances of, of players and where they fit best and how to get them to max out really quickly? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I started off in high school and, uh, in the high school is all about development, so maybe it made it easier for me to uh, project guys. Maybe um, you know because you've, you've seen them grow, uh, you know, and develop at that that age uh, quite dramatically. So uh, I don't know if that helped or not, but that, that's I don't know if that helps or answers your question. Coach, uh, you've been uh, all over. I mean, you've most recently been SEC, ACC, Big Twelve, obviously. Do you notice substantial differences from conference to conference or region to region, or is it all pretty much the same across the board? Well, you know, everybody's got good players. Um, you know, just they seem to be pooled in some schools more than others. You know, um, I think the Southeast Conference. I think the, you know, the gruelingness of the schedule is, uh, you know, it makes it a little bit different than the rest of them. But you know, there's there's you're gonna play, uh, you know, against guys that are getting drafted all the time. You know, so uh, you know, there's good players everywhere. I have uh, a couple of former players that sent me a text. About, I said, give me your favorite moment or memory about Coach Clem. From Philip Blake, Paul, you mentioned about taking anybody and turning them into a center. Uh, I, 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 was, uh, I was getting pulled during the game because we were blowing teams out, and he would have a lollipop for me to enjoy the rest of the game, and that was my 
That was why I wanted to be able to blow people out. You had a lollipop for Philip Blake on the sideline? Yeah, that was a, a victory blow pop, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we like I said, it came from high school, so it wasn't like we were smoking cigars like you do in the, in the Southeast Conference or whatever, so you had to, you had to do something. You recruited guys from everywhere. You found Philip Blake, obviously uh, Danny Watkins in that story, among many others. A lot of junior college players or players that came from elsewhere. How much fun was it to cultivate that talent and 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 turn them, no matter who they are? They, they seem like you had just a bunch of grown ass men. Well, that's that's the idea. Uh, you know, I always like to get guys that have a. You know, I think I got that from Coach Riles. You know, like people that have stories and. Uh, you know, we had a lot of those international kids, but, you know, those international kids, for the most part, were there for one reason. That was to, you know, go to school, get their degree, and have a shot at the NFL, you know. So, uh, so, you know, those were attractive qualities of those guys, and, you know, over the years, they had a lot of them work out. What what made you guys go international more so than a lot of schools with Canada and Australia? I mean, the Mir kids are from Australia. Yeah. Penitikive, Australia. Um, well, you know, as, as recruiting advanced, um, you know, you're, you had access to more and more video. And um, so, you know, if you saw video on a kid and, uh, you know, you had to take some shots, especially uh, where we were when we first got there, um, you know, because you weren't going to get any four-star kids. But, you know, there's probably a four-star quality athlete, you know, in Canada or in Germany or Australia or wherever, you know. So, uh you know, you look at that kid and, uh, you know, do your homework on him. And then you say, you know, if that kid was at, you know, Jersey Village High School in Houston, you know, how many offers would he have? You know, so uh, that's kind of the way we approached it. And, um, you know, it, it worked out for the most part, for sure. Coach, how wild and hard to keep track is recruiting right now as a coach? I mean, with the, the transfer portal, uh, you've got the free year now available for everybody to transfer that one time. And I know that some of this is still yet to go into effect, but uh, just compared to you know the way things used to be kind of deal, how difficult is it for, for coaches nowadays uh, in recruiting? Uh, it's impossible. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, the best recruiting you can do is win. Um, you know, and I think if you probably stick to that, you know, you'll probably be better off. But, uh, you know, now you have to recruit your own kids on your own roster, you know, because mm -hmm. if they're not happy, they're going to try to leave, you know. And um, it makes the roster management part of it very difficult, you know, because you're always trying to project how many scholarships we're going to have, you know. And, uh, you know, it's just it's, it's something that you just have to account for. So um, it's changing all the time, you know, the new – all about the merchandising, all that stuff, you know, we'll see what kind of effect that has. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely different than it was just a few years ago. From Cameron Koffel, a quote from Randy Clements. Cam, Thank you. Cam, the best compliment you can give someone is that they're consistent. You're not the best, you're not the worst, but you're consistent. We at least know what we're going to get from you. Except that time we played TCU in the first half, you just sucked. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, Cam. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, no, he, you know, um, we had some good times with those guys for sure. Um, you know, we had uh, that that old line room and that locker room is uh, there's something really sacred to football, you know, unique to football. And uh, really had a lot of fun with those guys while I was there and uh, had, some, had a lot of good memories. Mm hmm. No question. Randy Clements, former Baylor offensive line coach with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Jason is coaching now, right? Where Where is he? He is, yeah. He just took a job at Ponder. Okay. What kind of coach is Jason? I, how, how similar is he to you in, in the coaching in the coaching realm? Shoot, I haven't got to watch it. Every <laughs> time he's coaching, I'm coaching, so... Um, you know, I'm look, looking forward to being closer, you know, hopefully where I can catch a few games and that type of thing. But, uh, I'm excited to see for sure. The uh, TCU game, by the way, that Cameron Coffold brought up in that, that quote from Phil Bennett. My favorite Randy Clements story was the 14 TCU game. We pounded them with shock at the end of the game to eat the clock and kick a field goal. Randy is normally stoic and matter-of-fact on the sideline, but he was so fired up and kept telling Monty, 
run that blanker again. We can break them. It was fun as hell to watch him. TCU just quit. Our offensive line was driving them off, and Clemo was jacked. I still think the most amazing thing about that comeback, Randy, was the fact you did it with the run game. Not that you didn't hit some passes. What was that like to watch someone and take their will and what was an incredible win for Baylor football? Well, you know, it's, it, you know, every offense is different, but the ours was always predicated off the run game. And, uh, you know, if you establish that, then it pretty much frees up every facet of your offense, you know. So, uh, uh, we, you know, we hadn't really done it throughout the game. It was a game of big plays for the most part, I think, up until that time. And then, uh, you know, our guys were, uh, you know, Kaz, Kazadi, and those guys did a great job getting strong, and they stayed really, you know, great and late in games. And uh, it was definitely a fun moment there. Randy, we've had several coaches uh, on the show from that staff that had the great run up and through 16 when Jim Grove was interim. In fact, he was on with us just a couple of days ago. How much do you reflect back on your time at Baylor, and, and how difficult was the 16 season with all that you had to deal with? Um, you know, outside the locker room, it was tough. But, you know, once you get inside the walls and on the field, you know, you're with those guys, and you can you can block out a lot of things. Um, you know, Groby, he did the best he could in the situation he was in, and uh, he was great to work for, wonderful, wonderful man. And, um, you know, um, you didn't – I mean, you, you still love those kids in 16 like you love the guys that won the conference championship, you know. And, uh, you know, it, you just felt – it was a tough deal because you just felt what they were going through every day, you know. So, uh, um, you know, one of those experiences you just got to go grow from, you know. How much did it help – that you won that bowl game and dominated Boise State. And, and, and uh, Phil and Coach Grove have said that the practices leading up to that bowl game may have been the best ones you had all year. <laughs> yeah, they were the funnest, that's for sure. Um, now, um, that was a lot of fun. Anytime you can, you know, anytime you get a chance to hoist the trophy or win your last game, it's always a, a great thing in football. So uh, it was fun to finish up like that uh, with those guys and uh you know it's, uh, it was it was uh, like i said it was a great time and a lot of good memories there sure i want to tell somebody a story i tell everyone a story uh, <laughs> philip blake told me that he had a daughter that passed away back in 2013 and said that terrence ganaway and coach clem were the ones who showed up at the funeral that's family right there right well, you know, that was that was a tough, tough deal. Um, you know, and uh, I know, I'm, you know, you're not always able to be, you know, everywhere uh, for guys. But uh, you know, I just I can feel what he was going through, and you know, um, it was, he's from Canada. You know, and it wasn't like he had, uh, you know, a ton of family around him. You know, so uh, you know, it, I thought it was important for us to be there for him for sure. Coach, how much do you see what you guys were doing offensively uh, back in you know the early 2010s? How much do you see that just across college football or shades of it uh, nowadays? Well, it's you know there's parts of it. Everybody takes parts that they like and what they don't like. You know, um, and it's had a big influence, that's for sure. You know, but you anybody that's running you know any type of spread concepts, you'll see some of the stuff that uh, you know we had a lot of fun with. Was was uh, you went through spring with Ole Miss, and then all of a sudden you were gone. How much do you itch? To you, you mentioned you have some possible options, but how much will you itch right now, right now, to get back in the coaching game? Well, I mean, you always, you know, once you get out of routine, I mean, that's you know, ever since you were a little kid and you became an athlete, you know, you always clung to those routines, especially coaching and. Uh, you know, once you get out of it, you get kind of lost for a little bit. Um, just as long as you got something to focus on, you know, uh, I think you're okay right now. We got a house that we bought last summer. We were working to fix that up. So, you know, that keeps my mind occupied. But whenever I'm sitting there and not thinking and doing much, uh, yeah, it sure, it sure makes me want to get back out there for sure. Is it is a downtime for you if you have the time? Do you have like a pond on where you live or close by where you get in the boat and go out there and throw a hook in the water? Yeah, we, we got a house on the lake. 
uh, up here in Lake Iowa, uh, south of Gainesville. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a picture upper, but, uh, you know, that's, that's what makes it fun, too. So, uh, got, got a little bit of, uh, you know, a place where uh, family can be, you know, looking forward to the Fourth of July celebration with the kids and that type of thing. Yeah, there's, there's, that's, that would be awesome. Coach Bryles sent me a text. I asked him that. I said, ask me, I, give me a story about Clem. And, of course, he could give you a 1,000. But he said, ask him about the 2013 University of Houston offensive line that was the largest and heaviest offensive line in America. Uh, do you? 2003. 2000, yeah, 2003. Yeah. Uh, I mean, can you kind of describe those man eaters and, and ground movers and plowers and whatever else? Uh, they were big. Um, <laughs> I think our average weight, and we weren't the tallest line. You know, we may be six two, three fifty, but we were big. Um, but they were. Uh, I think they averaged like three forty five body weight that year. Uh, but we honestly, we had a lot of. Uh, you know, we had we had a lot of talent on that line, and um, you know, a couple of them, you know, kind of got overlooked because they weren't quite tall enough or something like that. But you know, we had a center, Rex had not. You know, he's. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm, I'm probably taller than him, and he played eight years in the league. And, uh, you know, we had uh, another kid, uh, Bubba Evans. He was with the Texans, I believe, for two years. You know, so we had some we had some guys in there. Uh, but that locker room and that uh, meeting room that he had, that was the one made that, uh, that group a lot of fun. Hadnot was from Lufkin, right? Is that am I right? Rex Hadnot? Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep, from Lufkin High School. Yeah. 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 Randy, I was He'll at – you, He's proud of it. It, we were at the Super Bowl. It was one of the ones the Patriots were in, so it's hard to remember which one and, and where. But I remember I was standing waiting to talk to Sebastian Vollmer, yep. who you coached, yeah. and yeah. I waited through what I, I thought there'd be like one person from Germany, but apparently if there's a German guy in the Super Bowl, all of German media comes to talk to this one guy. So I had to wait for all these people speaking German to uh, get through. And when I asked Sebastian Vollmer about you and Coach Bryles, uh, he lit up like you would not believe. He was so excited to talk about you guys. I think we, we play, I wish I still did a clip. It was two computers ago, but it was just a five minute clip about you guys, you and Coach Bryles and Coach Montgomery, everybody was there. And he would just bust it out. I just love talking about you guys forever and said that, you know, he wouldn't be in the NFL if it wasn't for you guys. That was a fun story. You know, we called him Sea Bass. <laughs> um, and uh, he, he was, I mean, very, very talented, uh, you know, tall, got all the physical moves that you want. But, uh, just a great, great guy that, uh, you know, loved to get after it and work. And he had a little bit of a, a mean streak. Mm -hmm. um, we had some coaches. Let's see, we had some coaches that had played in the NFL Europe on that staff. And uh, at the time, in that girl, Europe had a youth league or a youth program, and they had a camp over there. And uh, so they would go back every summer and work it. And they, you know, brought word. I think it was Thomas McGee brought uh, brought word about Sebastian. And uh, you know, we looked at some videos of him working out and stuff. And hey, we took a chance on it, you know, and uh, worked out for him and us. Coach, uh, what do you think about the expanded playoffs that are uh, in the works? Uh, as someone who's, you know, you saw it up close with Baylor just being edged out, the, the first team out uh, in the inception, uh, and just we've now got years of evidence with the four teams, the possibility now of moving to 12. What are your thoughts on that as, as a coach who's, who's seen it firsthand? Well, I think that type of stuff, um, I think it's healthy for the game, um, you know, giving more people uh, – you know, opportunity, um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to make for a long season, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, it'll make it interesting at the end for sure. But, uh, you know, the teams that do well, you know, there's, there's a handful of them that, got, you know, better roster depth and better talent, you know, they're always going to be up there, but the team that, you know, stays healthy late and, uh, that type of thing is one that usually you know, ends up panning out. Randy, uh, you have had success wherever you've been. I, I know not always exactly the way you want it to end. You've now been a part of the SEC. Paul brought that up as well. Craig brought up the differences perhaps in the conference. Is there anything like that conference? You mentioned the schedule, but what about the interest, the fan base, the passion? You know, I didn't really uh, be in there last year of all the years. So I didn't really get to experience it. You know? Oh, because of COVID. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, 
you know, we you now the people that showed up, you know, they were passionate and this and that. But um, you know, it's a I think there's just there's very strong traditions, you know, and um, you know, even if the team's not doing as well, it seems like the the fan supports uh, their do or die type deal, you know. What is the if you could paint an offensive lineman, yeah, you'd like six, seven, three hundred twenty-five pounds who can move his feet, whatever. But what is the the importance and priority? And obviously, size, height, whatever. But footwork, mean streak, intelligence. What what are some things that you have to have in an offensive lineman that plays for Randy Clements? Um, you know, being honest, probably the first question I ask. You know, because video will tell you a lot about what the kid can do first question I'll ask is, does he really like to play football? Um, you know, because, you know, you got a lot of kids that are using, you know, football as a vehicle for something else, you know, and whatever that reason might be, and they just don't necessarily love it. So the kids that really, really love to play and love to work at it and love everything about it, you know, those are the guys that you try to build your uh, locker room. Do you have you bumped in at any clinics, conventions? Do you know much about Jeff Grimes or Eric Mateos, who are now at Baylor, who are offensive line ment- uh, backgrounds? Uh, just by name. I'm by not really in relationship. Okay. Yeah. All right, Randy. Thank you very much. Enjoy that beautiful new home, and good luck with all that. Enjoy your weekend coming up in July with the family. Thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Randy Clements, former Baylor offensive line coach, uh, most recently Ole Miss, Florida State before that, and a long time offensive line. And they, you talk about because Baylor, let's be honest, since 16, their offensive line's been a mess. They've had maybe yep. one that was decent. But since he left, with all due respect to George DeLeon, and I know Sean Bell had it one year when DeLeon was injured. They never had done that before. Um and obviously last year was a nightmare with Joe Wickline. They were ass-kicking offensive linemen. I mean, they had six, eight of them. Yeah, they also had built the system, and it wasn't like that at the beginning when, he, when the, the, that, that coaching staff started in 08. But, my God, you came out of a game like that. What was the West Virginia defensive coordinator that said that it was uh, catastrophic how physically they were beaten up? Well, look. The first thing they did was make, in a year, they made Jason Smith into the second overall pick in the draft. I mean, it, it, like, that was before they were even good. Jason Smith was the second overall pick in the draft. And that's Randy Clements. And then he's got Danny a, Watkins was a uh, first round pick. He's got a firefighter from Canada. Yeah. And I mean, it just. A Juco guy, too. Juco yeah. guys from Canada and guys from Australia. And. Uh, who's going to be the center? Doesn't matter. He's he's picked like every year. I remember it took it, it took a couple years where the center would graduate and people would melt down. Oh my God! There's no center. No, no, no. He's already picked it out. When the guy walked on campus and said, "One day you're going to be the center," and that's how it was. He can yeah. make anybody a center. Yeah, you know, I don't remember exactly who would have been misses on the offensive line back then because that's been six, seven years now. And you know, I'd have to go and look it up, but it sure felt like they didn't have a lot of misses there that everybody, no matter if they were a lower-ranked guy or a higher-ranked guy, came in and was solid and got better. And uh, you didn't have, you know, lots of guys transferring out. You didn't have guys who just kind of disappear. I mean, you knew who was there. You had your five, and they were pretty much set. And then you had your, you know, your second group of guys, and they were set, and they were also solid. They were good depth, you know, for the most part. And... You know, now it's it's struggled to get just five out mm-hmm. there, much less having depth. And it's uh it's something that I think Eric Mateos and Jeff Grimes are gonna get control of and I think they're gonna get it fixed, but I think it's also going to take some time because I don't know that they have, you know, the the talent on campus. I don't know if they have the depth. I think that that's something that they'll obviously have a much better idea of once they see these guys playing games, but it has been an issue. I mean it and, I mean, in some ways, cost them a Big 12 championship, but then again, so did Chris Platt getting caught from behind, and so did, you know, various things along the way. But, I mean, they they were not a great offensive line that Big 12 championship year, and they got them there. But uh, outside of that, it's been they were pretty much I'll, missed. I'll, I'll tell you this. Now that the trans one-time transfer rule is in effect, if I'm a school that has offensive line problems, the first person I'm calling is Randy Clements. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. – from get it, get them to point A to point B to being effective offensive linemen. Maybe not road graders right away, but to where your quarterback's not getting his ass kicked. 
Randy Clements is, is – there's nobody better than him at that. At that particular part of it, and he's good at all of it, but that particular part of it of, okay, I need – you know, this guy's from JUCO, this guy's from Canada, this guy's from, you know, University of, of wherever the, the hell, and he's going to put them in, and they're going to be five good offensive linemen. And what they're going to be is they're going to be big guys. They're going to mm -hmm. be uh, – they're going to be movers of dirt and bodies – it doesn't mean they're going to be great, but they're going to be physical. And that's what I like and what I like to hear when I watch Eric Mateos coaching in practice. That doesn't mean he's going to turn in, you know, something into like cherry blossoms the first year. That's what Jeff Grimes' his background is in. And they need that probably more importantly than anything else on that football team is somebody that's going to create the offensive line mentality to get there, be angry, and push people. I'm telling you right now, I'm very much looking forward to watching Utah and Charlie Brewer to see what that looks like. Because if he's got five dudes in front of him that are blocking their butts off and he's like just throwing it all over the place, then a lot of Baylor fans are going to look dumb as hell for one, which I'm not rooting for that. I hope that's not what happens. I hope that we see kind of the same things we saw with Charlie at Baylor. And it's not just simply a matter of he wasn't getting the protection that he needed. Because, man, he took a beating while he was here. And I, I'm, I'm rooting for him to do well, but uh, I'm very curious to see how he plays in a different offense with a different line and, a, you know, just a different mentality because I think that's going to show us a lot. You know, even though the staff has changed once again, I think that's just going to show us a lot about the last couple of years. And was it really this issue or was it a combination? I th I'm always of the opinion it's a combination of things. Yeah, it was. I mean, he had some of his own self-inflicted issues. And, 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 oh, by the way, that doesn't mean he can go throw a 40-yard dart because he has protection, but it sure gives him an opportunity. I hope he has a great year at Utah, but I also hope Eric McTier Tails, Jeff Grimes and company give Jacob Zeno or whoever is going to be the starting quarterback, Gary Bohannon, whoever it might be, an opportunity to have a chance to move the football enough to be effective to where the defense sets you up and the defense then gives the offense opportunities to win the game. But they, they, they haven't had an offensive line that could get a third and one and you knew it was going to happen. I don't remember ever, and I'm sure they were stuffed, the TCU game in overtime, the double the double overtime game in the rain, but it was soaking wet. I don't remember for those six or seven, eight years uh, that I covered the, those teams with Randy Clements that an offensive line was just flat out stuffed. If it was third or fourth and one, you never did worry. About. Oklahoma State when Bryce Petty tripped. Yeah, we tripped. Yeah, then they got stuffed they at the goal line. Stuffed yeah. over and over. Again. But that was the exception. That was the exception. The overtime, double overtime, or whatever it was with TCU in the mud. Uh, and, and, and that crazy. All right, when we come back, he's the new offensive coordinator at Midway. Local name in Tommy Allison, now the offensive coordinator, was at Hallsville for a year, but was at Robinson for quite some time, and he's next on Sikkim 365 Radio. Pioneer Steel and Pipe building their brand-new facility in Waco on Loop 340 and 12th Street. Over the years, reputation they've had and a reputation they built because they've earned it one customer at a time. The boys at Pioneer or Pioneer Boys, no matter what you call them, the bottom line is that they are uh, they're resilient, they're loyal, and they have great product and incredible customer service since 1943. A business that helps you with heavy building products, metal, steel, pipe. Metal buildings help you with a contractor if you're building a metal building. Whether you use their product or not, they're going to help you find the right person to make sure that doesn't turn into a nightmare. And Pioneer Steel and Pipe, since 1943, has delivered not only product to wherever site there is going to be construction, but delivered to you the best product imaginable and incredible customer service. It's not that you go there and buy once. It's you go back over and over again. That is the sign of a great business. Pioneerboys.com. At Baylor University, students can shine in their own way. Or should we say their own ways? Because there's no limit to the ways Baylor students make the world a brighter place. Whether they're leading a student organization or following a higher calling, getting advice from faculty, or taking part in world-class research, pursuing their dreams, or working toward their dream job, students find their place to shine at Baylor, where lights shine bright. 
In the market for a quality metal building? Since 1943, Pioneer Steel and Pipe has helped Central Texas residential and commercial customers with metal building design, panel options, building components, and trim options. Pioneer Steel and Pipe's residential line is energy efficient, offers low maintenance, reduces insurance payments, is impact resistant, and carries up to a 45-year limited warranty. In addition, they can also help you find a metal building contractor for your project. Pioneer Steel and Pipe with locations in Waco and Bryan and at PioneerBoys.com. Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness was built to help give you a chance to enjoy elite tennis facilities and also remain fit or reshape your body. Now Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness has gone through its own physical changes. There are seven large flat screens stretched across the main and improved weight room with Wi-Fi available and their own app to enjoy news, business, weather, or sports channels. The beautiful sound of active treadmills and elliptical machines, group exercise classes throughout each day, a new ballet bar for bar classes, a new look lounge and bar with beer and wine with more large flat screens available. Touchless water fountains outside each spacious men's and women's locker rooms, showers, sauna, and whirlpool. Upgraded PA system throughout the world-class tennis courts and lessons for adults and juniors. I promise you'll look and feel better. You just need to walk through the front door. Also, Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness with personal trainers Christy London and Randall Corley. 40-plus group exercise classes, including twice-a-week boot camp. So start today, not tomorrow, at Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness on Lakeshore Drive in Waco. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Cam Heathcott, your Edward Jones financial advisor, knows that his most important goals are yours. That's why he takes the time to understand your needs, knowing you. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Cam Heathcott, covering Conroe and Houston, 936 756 7717 or cam.heathcott at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SI. PC. Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physician of Baylor Athletics. Our doctors specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of any and all sports-related injuries. Celebrating over a decade of service in Central Texas, our doctors are equipped to handle a wide range of issues, whether it's your foot or ankle, orthopedic spine care, your hand or wrist, knee and shoulder pain, or if you're in need of our arthritis or total joint clinic. Come see us at the new Baylor Scott & White Ted and Sue Getterman Sports and Orthopedic Center. Trust the doctors at Baylor Trust, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. Our goal is to get you back in the game. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchie Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchie Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchie Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchie Group at 1-800-258-8302. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Look into the end zone. He's got a man. Touchdown. RJ Speed. The 4 o'clock hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in house. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. All right, Monday we had Shane Anderson named Midway's head football coach, and we haven't. I'll tell you this right now. There have not been many times other than pregame stories or pregame interviews or a few interest, uh, human interest stories have had coordinators on, but this one has a little twist to it. Tommy Allison, former Robinson coach, most recently at Hallsville, has been named and accepted the job as offensive coordinator with Shane Anderson at Midway, Lenoy Jones Jr., Esram Mar- uh, a Sr., Esram Martinez are the co-defensive coordinators as well, and Tommy joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. When, when Shane contacted you, when all this started developing, let's say two or three weeks ago, what was your initial reaction about being a part of this staff as someone who's been a head coach now for a long time? That's a great question. Uh, you know, it's late in the process. So the first reaction is, you know, is this something you should consider this late? Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, to be able to work with Shane, to be able to have the opportunity to, to be a, a team member at Midway ISD, to be a Panther, man, how exciting is that? And 
it was tough. It's tough, you know, and it's tough, you know, being a head football coach for so long. But, wow, uh, hey, I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I'm pumped right now. Where did you and Shane first cross paths? I, I couldn't stand the guy on the field, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was on the other side of the sideline, and we were beating his butt, or he was beating ours. So <laughs> that's what that's where it crossed. It, it, whatever, District 17, 4A, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. How have you seen him grow as a coach over the years? Man, he, he has come so far. You know, he, he took that job as his first job and took over a county program that was not real strong and uh, came in there and brought in some discipline and more than anything, just, just a, a culture of hard work, uh, of a mentality that we're going to get after it. And uh, and, it, and their hard work has paid off, and it's, it's paid off to give him the opportunity to, to get one of the best jobs you know, if not in Central Texas, in the state of Texas. Tommy, you know that uh, they're in the district from hell. You've been in a few of those yourself, whether it's been as a head coach or elsewhere. But th- this is this is an uphill climb with what they have in front of them. But, hey, you know, you got to beat good people to get to where you want to be. Uh, did that enter into your conversations at all about Duncanville, DeSoto, Cedar Hill, and the rest? Not at all. I, why not Midway? I mean, why not midway in that same conversation? You know, they've been playing for state championships and mm-hmm. what twice in the last ten years. And uh, are those programs good? Absolutely. Uh, do you do respect them? And uh, is that where, is that where you want to get to yearly? Absolutely. But why can't we do the same thing here? And and at the end of the day, let's go play the best field. Let's go play. Let's go. I mean, so. You know, we got a job to do, and uh, we're going to have to do it quickly. But our job is to get these kids ready so that when we line up against those guys, we're ready to compete and have a chance to win. And, Coach, how much does that prepare you for a potential postseason? When you played those teams in the regular season, you're going to play good teams in the postseason, but you sure as hell are probably ready for it, right? <laughs> well, you're playing the best right off the bat, yeah. yeah. So, so it, if, if you're able to get in, man, it's like, okay, let's go. You know, so uh, absolutely. Is it going to be a challenge? Absolutely it is. But, uh, you know, our, our goal, and I know Shane's going, and, and, and here it is. I, I, I want to be an advocate for, advocate for him. Uh, I, I just want to be a team member that helps uh, him be successful at that school. And uh, so our goal is, man, when they mention those names, they're mentioning the, the Midway Panthers at the same time. So that's what we're working for. Your offense is, is is very prolific. It's been prolific in a lot of different ways. And you have – I know you've, you've gone through a couple different philosophies. Have you settled into one that you you apply, or are you, are you kind of waiting to see what you've got and then we'll kind of mold it to that? Well, I mean, you, you can't be stupid. You know, you can't go in there and, you know, try to run the wishbone to get spread, guys. But uh, we have an idea we want to do. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're, we're a spread tempo team that – we're going to take what the grass gives us. We're going to play fast. We're going to play a type of offense that people want to watch. You know, we're going to get butts in the stands. That hey, this is fun stuff to watch, and where kids want to play it, and they'll play hard for it. And we'll take what the defense gives us, whatever that case may be. And now, do you have to adapt it a little bit uh, to, to the personnel you have? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm excited about uh, having an opportunity to be part of that offense there, and and working with that offensive staff to to put together something that uh, that people will really be proud of. Tommy, you mentioned it's late in the in the year. It is. Uh, when Jeff Hume took the job at Legacy in Mansfield, and all of a sudden Brad Shelton, George Kazanis, and others uh, 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 had to kind of turn this thing around very quickly. How much do, do the new rules from the UIL allowing a few things in the summer, not just seven on seven, that's about to happen, or it's almost, I guess, almost ready to conclude, but how much – allowing you to be hands-on a little bit during the summer, how much does that help when it's so late in the year? It's huge, David. I, I, you know, especially at the 6A level, you know, when you have spring ball. So they're going to start a week later. So so those guys play spring ball in a different system that we're going to start a week later than everybody else, you know. And so uh, it's huge. You know, I have not seen have an hour a day. Uh, to work with those kids and do some of the install. It, it's still going to take some time, absolutely. Uh, but that is a definite advantage. If we didn't have that, it would really really be hard. You know, you're looking at, what, two weeks and mm-hmm. you're playing a game. So, uh, but here at the end of the day, all that stuff, that's excuses. You know, our, our motto is like, man, attack the challenge, whatever the challenge is. Or do we have a challenge there? Absolutely. But we're going to coach it with a mindset of whatever's in front of us, let's go. 
and that's what the mindset we want from our kids. And uh, we're grateful for that opportunity from the UIL for sure. You have always been pretty wide open. That, but at the same time, when you were at Cayuga, you had Kennedy, of course, Malcolm Kennedy. You had Traylon Shed, and I remember your trip to win, almost won a state title. I haven't heard those names in so long, yeah. but it brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> yeah, and and then also then uh, eventually won the state title as well. Do you know the subtle? I mean, you have what you like to do compared to what you've seen Midway do. Have you watched film of them? Or, or is it too like soon for you to be able to do that? You know, it, I think it's a little early, but you know, it it, it all adapts. So the stuff we did there at Cayuga was different. What we did at Robinson, we had a little. It was the same stuff, but it's different. Uh, do I think the pieces and are Midway to do what we need to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do they have talent at Midway? Absolutely. You know, and do we, do we have to do things get bigger, faster, and stronger? Yes, we do. But, you know, I'm confident uh, that, that we're going to be able to run our spread tempo stuff there. Uh, you know, a big thing, you know, our, our stuff is very much quarterback driven. So, you know, as quick as we can, you know, we need to be training quarterbacks, training quarterbacks in the seventh grade, in the sixth grade, in the eighth grade. But in particular for now, you know, those guys that are there in the high school, you know, working with those guys and getting them ready to lead that offense. How much does it help you're in a one horse town? That's awesome, man. How fun! How fun a Friday night's going to be. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you know when you when you think of six eight jobs, man. Wow, let's go Midway Panthers. I I, I just think it's a great opportunity. It's going to be a lot of fun, man, and I can't wait to get started. You get to see us every single week, Tommy. <laughs> oh, think God. about that. Oh God! You know that's you know I, I think I was with you guys for nine years. I, I remember I got to I got to Robinson and I was begging David. I I had a pass with Old Smokey and I, I was pulling some plugs. Say, come on, man, put us on the air. And so, man, to have the chance to be back with you guys, that's pretty awesome, man. I I, I guess the most because I, I guess you know our horse as well, so. But that's going to be a lot of fun, man. No, I enjoyed it, and and uh, can't wait to be a part of it. If you think about the staff, and I know that Shane still has a couple of more things to pull, but with you, Lenoy Jones Sr., Ezra Martinez as co-defensive coordinators, he's bringing some from Conley, keeping some from Midway, among maybe one or two others. How impressive is what he's done in that part to be able to put together a staff Again, I say this late in the year, but a very impressive list of people. It's huge, man, and and, and that goes that goes to just show you the relationships that Shane has. You know, I mean, one thing about Shane is uh, he loves people. You know, and, and he's not afraid to talk and get to know you, and uh, that's what it has a lot to do with. And, and and I tell you, another person that really deserves a lot of credit uh, is is uh, Brad Shelton, yep. athletic director. Yep, he's been an awesome asset for Shane and. Uh, just making stuff happen and, and trying to uh, allow him to put a staff together that he thinks it's going to take to be successful. And, you know, just the whole team there from the administration on down, the alignment, man, it's incredible. And I, I just feel so energized right now, man. I, I don't know if you can hear my voice or not, mm -hmm. man. I just, somebody find me a house. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you do. And I can feel it, but you've always kind of been that way. And then there's the tough part of the business. You leave Robinson <laughs> Uh, everyone knows the story there. They they wanted to split yeah. things up with the AD football coach. You go to Hallsville. It didn't have a very first good first year, and plus you had to deal with COVID. It was tough. But what was it like to have to tell them you were leaving? Today is one of the hardest days I've been through in a long, long time. Uh, these kiddos here bought into everything we're doing, the relationship. We loved each other. I told the kids we loved them, and today was hard. There were lots of tears. Uh you know, maybe even some angry kids to the fact that they feel they've been abandoned. And so I feel horrible. I, I, I mean, it's a, it's late. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, it's wrong with what, you know, it's just, it's tough. And so today has been really, really, really hard. So it's, it's, it's by, as I give you my excitement about being there, man, my heart is ripped out for these kids. And, and that's the truth because they're so, they're such good kids who have worked so hard uh, and done everything that we've asked. I mean, the strength gains, the, the attitude, the yes, sir, the hugs, the I love you, coach, the giving everything that you've got, uh, and, and then a coach leaves late, and that, that's got to be pretty tough. And, and I'm so sorry for that, but uh, uh, hopefully we made a difference here. Hopefully in 12 months we made a difference to help them moving forward. All right, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate your Thanks. time. Tommy, All right, man. Tommy Allison, a uh, longtime coach at Robinson. He would have been at Jacksboro after he won a state title at Cayuga with those names of Malcolm Kennedy 
in Traylon Shed. I remember speaking at their championship uh, uh, banquet. Uh, he's a, he's a good one, and, and and yeah, it is tough. It sucks, you know, for the kids at Hallsville, just like it did when, uh, you know, others leave at the last second or, or whatever. It's part of the business. It's not good. It's not much you can do about it, and that's a hell of a hire for Shane Henderson and Brad Shelton to the Midway football team. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you go and take something, that means you're giving up something, and so unfortunately, Hallsville's on the receiving end, but Midway or is on the receiving end of the bad side of it. But uh, Midway getting a great coach and. I love the excitement that I hear in his voice, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, love Shane Anderson. I think he's great, and so looking forward to covering this Midway team. It's going to be tough for them on the field, you know, obviously with the schedule, but I think they'll they'll put up a good fight and, and maybe win a few more games than expected, and it should be a lot of fun. Well, they got it. We know the story there, and 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 you know, they, they there's a district from hell, and there's Mansfield. And there's Lake Ridge, and there's Waxahachie, and I know Lake Ridge last year struggled, but so did Midway, and uh, Waxahachie and Mansfield. You got to win those games. Those all those teams know that's who they have to beat. They have to kind of run the table uh, against each other. There's a there's a note up on the athletic in the uh, athletic on Twitter. I'm going to go over this a little bit later on. In the past 48 hours in the NBA, what are some of the stories? But real quickly, we're also joined by now the new defensive coordinator, uh, Ezra Martinez, also a part of that staff with Shane Anderson at Midway. But this is also yet another local story. So Shane Anderson's a Conley grad, comes from Conley. Allison's from Central, well, went to Palestine Westwood, but he was at Robinson. And man, are we thrilled. Lenoy Jones Sr. joins us. A name of football in Central Texas, Gross Spec native, TCU, NFL, and now has been on the staff at Midway and now the defensive coordinator. Lenoy, what did today mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. Uh, you know, you go from not knowing what's going to happen to to being named the defense coordinator at Waco Midway. So I, I'm thrilled to death. I'm tickled, and uh, it's an honor to have the opportunity to lead these guys uh, this season. You've been coaching the defensive line, linebackers, but most of the defensive line for a long time. How how did you feel – how long ago did you feel ready to start calling a defense? It, it's probably been a bit for you, hasn't it? I mean, it has, but I think everything that I've done so far in my career has led me to this moment. I mean, you just you just know. I mean, I've been around the game long enough. I mean, I've been around great coaches. And uh, just to have an opportunity to contribute to the, the, the future success of, of Midway, I mean, it, it, it's – it's great. So just 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 being around the game and understanding, hey, they, they running this and this is what I want to call or this is what I want to see, and you, you you just know those things. You just know. Coach, what was your initial reaction when you heard that Shane Anderson was going to be coming back to to Midway to take over for Jeff Hume, and and then subsequently, what was your reaction? I guess a few days later, when you know he uh, tells you that he wants you to be his defensive coordinator. Well, I was I was thrilled to death. You know, it's. It, you know, to have worked with Shane before, prior, uh, as once he was position coach, then under him as a defense coordinator, and, and we think a lot alike. And I think that's really what led to him making the decision to to promote me and to to have me uh, give me opportunity to uh, take over the position. So I was I was thrilled to death. You know, excited. You know, most importantly, excited for the kids. The kids seem to, to be really responding well to him this week, and you know, it's it's it's, it's it's great for him. It's great for Midway. Uh, and it's just, like I said, another great opportunity for me. I don't know of too many more families that have been entrenched in Midway. I know you went to Grosbeck High School, TCU, played with the Browns and the Oilers and part of the NFL. But as far yes, as your family, entrenched into that school district in the football program, your sons have played linebacker there. Um, do you feel like you're as much Midway as you could possibly be? I, I feel so. You know, my, my kids have been a part of the program. And and, and my biggest thing with, with the younger two, they don't want to leave. So <laughs> put dad in a in a, in a situation because they, they want to graduate from here. They want to leave. And I got one that's in the sixth grade. And he's like, Dad, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go anywhere. So, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it just kind of worked out well for me in, in, in this sense. Now, now my freshman is not a football player. He, he's a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got the football player coming. Oh. But uh, it is. It's it, it, it's great, and and you know Midway is a great place. It's been good to the Jones family, and uh, you know it's it, it's been a great ride for us. But I really do look forward to the challenge. Well, there's always one that's different. 
Illinois. So, I mean, there's always that's one. The black sheep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the one, but uh, how, how much does it help for you to be, you know, part of the staff that's staying here so that, especially this late in the game, uh, you can kind of help everybody along knowing what you have, what's going forward and what the, the best things are and, and kind of giving them kind of the backstory of what they're coming into. Well, you know, the, the, the kids really know me and I think that's a big part of why, made me to these kids is you felt that the kids know me and I think that you know we hadn't made it public I'm sure they're here before Monday but I think the kids are excited you know and just kind of getting them focused on what we need to do and not worry about anybody else but just working our tails off to be the best we can be and uh going forward get this thing back to where we know it needs to be but um it, 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 it's really been a really good experience for me uh, and and I think the kids will definitely benefit but it's just it's, it's not just me it's it's, it's coach anderson it's, it's it's the rest of the staff that's going to help um think help put what we want to these players and, and give them an idea of the direction that we're going lenoy jr's in maryland now isn't he Yes, sir, he is. So how is he enjoying that? And, and when did you see in him? Because, I mean, golly, I remember covering him at Midway and then at Baylor and then <laughs> seeing him around Baylor. But uh, when did you know that he kind of had some of the coaching juice in his veins as well? Well, I think he, 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 he's had it for a while, you know, and he, and he was a teacher as he was playing. Um, you know, for, unfortunately for him, he couldn't continue his, his playing career, and he knew mm -hmm. it. You know, he was he – was, he medically retired, and he's like, Dad, I, I want to coach, and I want to go that route. He stayed on with Baylor and, and did a great job for them there. And, you know, when Coach Stewart went to Maryland to become the D.C., you know, and I, I asked him, I said, hey, what do you think if, if, if Coach reached out to you, what are you going to do? And he did, and, uh, and he went with him, and I think it's going to be a, it's great for him. It's a great experience for him. And he's just continuing to grow. And, I mean, he, he's – he really has a really great understanding of the game, and I think he's 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 a hard worker. I mean, that's the one thing about him. He he works extremely hard. So uh, I think he's a uh, he's a little homesick because he's lived in Texas his whole life, played high school, played college. Yeah. So he's a little homesick, but I think he he's enjoying. It. And I think once the season get here, it'll be a little bit easier on him. But. You know, he's working hard right now to, to prepare for the season. Just have him go get some crab cakes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, be oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has. He's having a good time. <laughs> when you were in the NFL as a business, you played at TCU, which is right up the street, basically up yes, 35 sir. from Grossbeck. But when you were in the NFL in Cleveland, did you ever yes, go through that, being homesick, even though that was a job? Well, I had my family with me, and that made it a little bit okay. easier. And, and, and a lot of those guys were really close-knit. You know, I went to a lot. You know, I had kids, so I went to a lot of birthday parties, and I hung out with a lot of players. So we spent a lot of time with, with, with the players and their families and, and getting to know them and being around them, which makes it a little bit easier. It's always great to come home, though, but that, that made it easier. Congratulations. Uh, it, it seems like uh, Shane has been able to put together a, a staff, a, a very yes, locally – oriented staff but one with some really interesting names and and guys yes, with sir. resumes i mean you're going to be going against tommy allison's offense every day that's going to be fun yes, to watch huh because of uh it, it, it should be <laughs> that'll be fun it be. hey yes, sir, lenoy thank you congratulations glad this opportunity came your way as uh lenoy jones senior from grossbeck high school been on the midway staff for as long as i can remember and now the co-defensive coordinator uh, with Midway under Shane Anderson. Ezra Martinez is coming in from the Connolly staff will be a part of that, among others as well, as Shane continues to put together his staff. Uh, we're going to – we take a break here, Paul? Okay, all right. Now, we're going to come back here in a second. Stay with us. Jared Butler's about to join us. He was named the Big 12 Conference Male Athlete of the Year. And we're going to get a comment or two from Jared. We've had him on, obviously, when he decided to turn pro – but what a cool story is with Illinois Jones Sr. being a part of the Midway staff and being promoted as well. Uh, by the way, there's God, There's a story about Marlin High School. That program that has struggled, we've heard, we've talked about the district. They have a couple of young men that are getting high-level Division I interest. I'll tell you a little bit more about not just Gullet now, but Trahan Butler we've had on the show in just a second. We're now joined by Jared Butler, Big 12 athlete of the year and of course we know all american we know getting ready for the nba draft and all of that and just uh we've had him on many times jared when you heard that news what did it mean to you 
I admit a lot, you know, just another accolade, just, you know, another accomplishment. I um, just want to give credit to just my teammates and the people around me. And uh, just credit to you guys, too, for being so gracious to having me. And uh, I appreciate it a lot. Jared, when uh, when did you find out? And, and do you, I mean, do they did they send something to you? Is there going to be a ceremony? Do you know? <laughs> I have no clue. Um, I, I haven't been on social media in the past, like, um, 12, 14 hours. So um, uh, one of my assistant coaches texted me and he said I won it. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there'll be more details coming soon. But, you know, just, just excited right now. What's that like as an athlete to deal with social media? And I think you're going to get a much bigger dose, you know, as a pro than you did probably as a college player. And it's not like you had too many negative things during your career that people could really hound you about. But how, how hard is that as a young man to just – balance that attention that you get that can be so positive but also the the other side of things as well yeah it's definitely a struggle just because you know opinions and um you know just people's um claim that they have on you and what they say about you it it it, it runs deep you know and um, social media is a place where you can compare yourself where you know people just say anything about you and you know you you got to find a balance between you know um, having your own identity and trying to, you know, balance, um, you know, what people say about you. So it's, a, it's definitely a thing. And you can't get caught up all up in it because it's not real life at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jared, you mentioned it's one of other things that you've won, and that means you've been good across the board with all the things, both what you are as a person, what you are as a student athlete, and also as an athlete. Do they all mean a lot? Uh, do they all of them mean a lot? Do you, you don't get numb to these, do you? <laughs> no, I don't get numb. Um, I just, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, these awards um, are just a culmination of just the people around me that's helped me to get to this point. Um, obviously, just, you know, not um, um, God in my life. Um, you know, just a culmination thing. So there's not too much credit I can take for it. Um, I've just been trying to be, you know, faithful and trying to, you know, be the best person I can be. And, um, you know, I let the chips fall where they may. So I'm not numb at all. How are your workouts going? It's, it's, it's going well. Um, it's nice being able to just focus on basketball, and, and that's about it. Um, no homework paper or, or anything to do when I come home, so that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, uh, is it, like, nervous energy now with the, the, the countdown, so to speak, to the draft? Like, what? I mean, you get to, like you said, focus just on basketball, but what's just the waiting game like? Um, it's, it's, I think for me, um, in my situation, I think, um, a lot of the work has been done and uh, what I've done throughout the season. So I've kind of, you know, um, feel real comfortable, feel real good about where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, I'm just, you know, can't wait to see where the chips fall. And, um, you know, I think no matter where I go, I'll, I'll, you know, make the most of it. So that's, that's really it. You know, I'm just trying to control what I can control and not worry about things I can't, you know. Mm-hmm. And Jared, Mike, last question for you is that, so here you are, you're preparing, you're working out, you're doing all this. Are you kind of in a cocoon where it's just, and you always have been gracious enough to respond to text messages since you uh, left Baylor, but is it something that you just focus on basketball, getting healthy? Not, I say healthy, like eating right, you're, all that, and, and, and you just kind of do that and, and that's it <laughs> yeah um but at the same time it, now it's, uh, it's sort of speak my job right so yeah. I, I try to have a good work li- work life balance and um you know i work you know extremely hard um but at the same time i try to make sure i'm not too in- engulfed in it and um you know it's it's nice i'm in um i'm actually in chicago right now so the city's nice so it's, it's just been a great place to just you know work out and, and also and just enjoy myself I got to share this. We had Lace Darius Dunn on yesterday. He is oh, really? a he is a huge fan of Jared Butler. He said that's my oh, really? that's my guy. I, I think he likes you know Lace Darius never shot a saw a shot he didn't like. And, but uh, right. <laughs> he he really he complimented everybody. But he really is a fan of Jared Butler. I'm, yeah, I'm sure you said, met him. For, I got the tweet out. Yeah. I said, he said that's my guy. He's special. I love watching him play. And I think he said some other stuff too. But that was the part of the quote I was able yeah. to catch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> 
Yeah, he, he's a losing animal, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was talking about you, like a whole group of Louisiana animals. He was talking yeah. all about it. He, he was all about the Louisiana animals. I had never, I had never heard of that until he brought it up yesterday. I mentioned you and Mark Vidal and all the others. Rico. Right. Yeah, Rico. Rico yeah, yeah. yeah. Tweety Tweety. Carter, don't Tweety. Him. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's, he's the one that opened up that pipeline. He's the one that For turned. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Hey, Jared, go, go do your thing, man. I appreciate you jumping on last second, but congratulations on yet another honor in what you represent. We appreciate you and good luck going forward, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Jared Butler, former Baylor national champion, All American, all of that. Now, the latest is the Big 12 Male Athlete of the Year. That's pretty darn good. When we come back, Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com. Craig's off the radar. And much more to come. Sikkim, 365 Radio. Richard Carr, Buick GMC Cadillac. They've got the summer savings event going on right now over at Richard Carr. So you need to stop by and take advantage while you can of all the great deals that they have going on right now. And, you know, travel's back People are out on the roads. If you haven't noticed, uh, going to and fro, whether driving across state or across country or flying or whatever the case may be. But if you're driving, I mean, the last thing you want to do in this heat is be out on the road and, and be in a vehicle that's not very reliable, right? That, that would be terrible. So if you're in need of a new vehicle or a pre-owned vehicle, take advantage of these deals right now at Richard Carr. You can get back on the road with space, safety, and luxury with a Buick. Richard Carr has Buick SUVs, all priced to move. Right now, current Buick or GMC owners get 16% off new 2021 Buick Encores, 13% on Encore GXs, 9% on midsize Buick Envisions, or 13% on full-size Buick Enclaves. And as I mentioned, uh, Richard Carr is loaded with premium pre-owned cars and trucks. All pre-owns are priced to move during the summer savings event with multiple cars and trucks priced under $230 a month for qualified buyers. And each pre-owned vehicle goes through a 172-point inspection before it hits the lot. With dozens of lenders, they say yes when others say no. 100% credit approval is always Richard Carr's goal. And they are also your local hometown dealership, so give Richard Carr Motors a chance to earn your business with great prices, free oil changes on new cars and trucks, and superior service after the sale. So come by and take a test drive or let them bring the test drive to you. Just give them a call and they'll help set it up. It's a summer savings event going on all month at Richard Carr. Boozers is the wedding ring store and more. If you're ready to get engaged or already married and want to upgrade your wife's ring for a special anniversary, Boozers is the place to go. With the largest selection of premier quality diamond engagement rings and wedding rings in Central Texas. They have seven cases with over 300 styles of rings from top designers like Natalie Kay. Choose from yellow, white, or rose gold, plus beautiful top quality loose diamonds. With an in-house jewelry, they can also custom make anything you want. Bring in a picture or draw in and let Boozers create your one-of-a-kind pendant or ring. They can even use some of your old gold and diamond jewelry to create something new. At Boozers, you'll find a great selection of quality timepieces, and Boozers is the place for expert watch maintenance and repairs, too. They specialize in expert Rolex watch repair for fine jewelry, watches, custom work, and more. Go to Boozers on Valley Mills and Lake Air Drive in Waco. Boozers, the wedding ring store. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Do you or your kids get nervous about going to the dentist? Stonewood Dental. Dr. Steve Childress, he can help. I've spent a career taking care of patients who, as children, had bad experiences. And now they're adults that hate going to the dentist. If I get a kid at three years old and they come every six months, and it's a happy experience, it's normal for them. Now they have an accident at six or seven or eight at school. Now they have a broken tooth or a trauma. And they have to come here... They're used to lights, they're used to water in their mouth, they're used to experience, they already trust us. It's amazing what we can do with that kid without it being a negative thing. But if I see a six or seven or eight year old that's never been to the dentist, and now they have a trauma or an unfortunate unexpected toothache, it's harder to do that for that kid and it not be somewhat of a negative experience. So bottom line is I try to teach kids and adults and teenagers and everybody the way I'd want my family treated, which is where it's a necessary part of life. You just take care of it. It doesn't have to be that big a deal. Learn more. Stonewood-Dental.com. 
from the first workout to the last practice, sports is an incredible and rewarding challenge. Hi, everyone. This is Dan Ingham with the First National Bank of Central Texas, and we're proud to support each athlete, every parent, and our educators. From families, small businesses, to the biggest industry, we're here to help. With remarkable products like mortgage lending, we've got banking ideas that fuel big dreams. The First National Bank of Central Texas, familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Don Humidor, you're home with a 48-foot walk-in humidor with the elite cigar brands from around the world, including the number one cigar of the year, Aging Room, Quattro Nicaragua. Plus, they have the great brands like Macanudo and Artur Fuente, Rocky Patel, Aston, and so much more. CBD, great for sore muscles, aches and pains, sleep, Vita Dreams and anxiety, mild depression, general health and wellness. Their staff, very knowledgeable on the subject. If anyone is curious about CBD, ask Carol and Ashley. Don Schumanor in the Townwood Shopping Center off Valley Mills in Waco. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Prescott on the keeper, walks in, touchdown, Dallas. It's time for our weekly segment with Mickey Spagnola of DallasCowboys.com. Brought to you by the First National Bank of Central Texas, with five locations to serve you. Mickey Spagnola joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio, kind of the lull before the storm, eventually training camp in Oxnard, California. So, Mickey, if you had the first question during what is that, you know, annual Jerry... Jerry, uh, Stephen, Rich Dalrymple, and Mike McCarthy again. <laughs> what would your first question be to whoever you directed it to? You mean if I could beat Dale Hansen to the punch? Yeah, if you could get Hansen in the back. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would probably ask anyone uh, of uh, the three, the two Joneses and Mike McCarthy, if they think they have done enough to significantly improve this Cowboys defense for 2021. Do you think they have? I see some signs of it. And just because uh, I seem to have some faith uh, in Dan Quinn as the new defensive coordinator, uh, the fact that uh, they also uh, brought in, or not brought in, but gave uh, Andrews, uh, the the former Cowboy linebackers coach uh, and uh, former NFL defensive quarter coordinator, more say with the linebacker position. Uh, brought in Joe Witt, uh, a veteran secondary coach that had been with Quinn in Atlanta. Uh, I, I just think if the coaching staff does a better job maybe this defense can go from historically bad to maybe closer to average and after last year i'd take average uh compared to the position that defense put them in last year i think some of the personnel moves uh will help i think uh a healthy leighton vander esch will make a significant difference. And I just think, and you guys know I've been on board with this for months, uh, Micah Parsons uh, can make uh, a huge leap on what happens with this defense this year. Well, then that might answer my question then. Of all of the added tools, weapons, toys, or whatever, however they arrive to Dallas, is he the one that must hit? Is he the one that must be a player, so to speak. I'm a guy that's going to make a difference, or is there somebody else that they brought in, draft, free agency, trade, whatever, that has to be ahead of him? Yeah, I don't know about uh, got the other guys that they brought in need to be ahead of him, uh, but I think Leighton Vander Esch, who had been uh, you know, suffering from the injury bug the past two seasons, has to be the Leighton Vander Esch we saw make the Pro Bowl his rookie year. And under understand how uh, good he was that year. He's the only Cowboys linebacker in their history, 61 years, to make the Pro Bowl as a linebacker in his rookie year. I, I need that again from him. 
I need Parsons to make a difference. And the other guy that needs to make the jump that he was starting to make towards the end of the season is Randy Gregory. Because you remember, you know, no off season. This was his first off season since his rookie year in 2015 uh, because of suspensions. Uh, and in those last several games, I thought Randy Gregory was looking like the guy the Cowboys thought they drafted in the second round uh, in 2015. And if he can make that leap at right defensive end, then that'll improve what Demarcus Lawrence can do on the left side. And then I think their biggest concern has to be what happens at defensive tackle. And they've thrown so many solutions at it that I think, you know, somewhere along that rotation, they should be able to survive better than they did last year at that spot. Mickey, Jalen Smith, much maligned by, by many Cowboy fans, and, and some for good reason, some for just, you know, they've decided that he's he's the problem, number one, with the defense for whatever reason. But is his decline, was his were his struggles more physical or mental in the last couple of years in that he had the year when we after he got the before he got the extension where it looked like his speed was back he was sideline to sideline and everything that they'd expected from him and then he he looks like he might be a step slower but is that more confusion or is there concern about his physical decline i think i think some of it is um confusion you know they moved him to weak side linebacker last year he's not a weak side linebacker i'm sorry your weak side linebacker's got to be able to run uh, he can go forward. Uh, he doesn't do very well going backwards. Uh, I, I think if they play him, uh, he needs to either be in the middle or the strong side. And we'll see how all that works out. But I think with the number of linebackers they have now, they can kind of match up to whatever the opponent is doing. They don't have to stick with this guy and this guy solely. If, if they got a team that – you know, they need to match up better, uh, has a, a good tight end, uh, a good third receiver. You know, Kwan O'Neal uh, could, could move in at one of those linebacker spots and not just on nickel. Uh, Van Der Esch can play the weak side. Micah Parsons can play all three. And if he's on the field and there's three linebackers, they can put him on the line of scrimmage at one point and have an extra pass rusher. He's that versatile. Uh, so for Jalen Smith, I just think he got miscast as a weak side linebacker. Mickey, one more question, and I know you got to go, and we'll have plenty more as we lead up into the training camp. What is one thing they still must do between now and Oxnard? Anything contract-wise, anything else, or are they pretty much set and they take the flight to Oxnard? Who's the backup quarterback? Uh, and, and I don't know that that's been established during these, what they had basically – six OTA practices, two mini camp practices. I think that's still uh, an open position. Uh, and I think it's still, David, something that they will keep their eye on and kick tires uh, once they're seeing if there's any other uh, veteran quarterbacks out there with some experience, some experience. The three guys they've got right now have a total of two starts in their NFL careers, and both of them were last year. Uh, so to me, eyes wide open for a backup quarterback if one comes available and comes available for the right price because they're bumping up right against the salary cap. Mickey, thank you. Uh, enjoy the, the summer. We'll have you a couple more times, I guess, before training camp in Oxnard. Can't wait. Thanks for your time. See ya. Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com. So on Tuesdays at 5, David Hellman. Wednesdays at 5, John Machota. 4.30 on Thursdays, Mickey Spagnola. And this is the offseason. And, of course, more to come as well. When we come back, Craig Smoke off the radar. Sikkim, 365 Radio. If you are looking to buy a new home or sell the one you're in, you need to call my friend Lance Donaldson and the Donaldson family team brokered by eXp Realty at 254-214-3713. Look, the real estate market's crazy right now. It's a seller's market. If you're going to sell a house, if you're going to buy a house, you need somebody to navigate you through the process that's going to get you through all the ups and downs and, and guide you through this market. Well, Lance Allison is a guy who can do that. He's a great listener. He's going to hear everything you have to say, and he's going to help you find that dream home. So give him a call, 254-214-3713, or at, online at lancedallison.exprealty.com.
With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchie Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchie Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchie Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchie Group at 1-800-258-8302. It's time to fire up the grill, heat up the oven, or get that deep fryer going to enjoy the top quality products at Waco Custom Marketplace. Order 30 pound sacks of live crawfish by 6 on Wednesday. Pick up on Friday afternoon after 2 or Saturday. Enjoy the weekend. 30 pound sacks of live crawfish available right now for $4.25 a pound. Find all the crawfish boil ingredients you need, including red beet potatoes, sausage, corn cobbets, and Louisiana boil seasoning. Make your order for live crawfish by Wednesday at 6. Pick up on Friday after two or all day Saturday and enjoy the weekend. Waco Custom Marketplace, your home for fresh baked kolache, cinnamon rolls every day. Butcher shop to cut your steaks the way you want. Fresh seafood, summer sausage, boudin, house cured and smoked bacon, spices, seasoning, soup mixes and more, and weekly gift boxes for any occasion. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco or WacoCustomMarketplace.com. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. Stepping into a new pair of boots is great, but stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can also add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. There are more than 150 occupational specialties to help them find the best fit for their future. See all the things your son or daughter can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. Tennis for qualified buyer with 4,000 down to 2.9%. TTNL Extra. See dealer for details. Travel is back during the summer savings event at Richard Carr. Explore America in the space and safety of an SUV or truck from Richard Carr. Savings like a 2016 Buick Encore for $148 a month, a 2017 GMC Sierra for only $318 a month, or a 2016 GMC Acadia for only $228 a month. At Richard Carr, 100% credit approval is always the goal. Log on or get here now and save at the summer savings event at Richard Carr. At Richard Carr, we give How did Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world? By not acting that way. Financial strategies, one-on-one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for Craig Smokes Off the Radar. All right, welcome into On the Radar, where we take a look at uh, various <laughs> stories. What? On the Radar? Or off the Radar, excuse me. Uh, uh, where we take a look at various stories uh, going on in sports that uh, kind of do grab bag style here. So we're uh, going to start off with the new bowl game in Los Angeles. Jimmy Kimmel is uh, now a title sponsor of an inaugural bowl game in Los Angeles. The Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl will be played December 18th on ABC. He's a part of the ABC Network, obviously. That's where his show is. It'll be at the Rams SoFi Stadium and will feature the number one selection from the Mountain West Conference against the number five selection from the Pac-12 Conference. And Kimmel said in uh, making the announcement last night on his show, this is not a joke. This is a real bowl game named after me, so mark your calendar. So now we have the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. Yeah, I think Jimmy Kimmel, of anyone, is definitely jumping in on making fun of this and how many they are that he can get one. And, look, it's good for ABC. It's good for cross-promotion. Jimmy, Look, Jimmy Kimmel sponsoring this bowl 
is better than and look in the in the top five i have five ridiculous bowls based on this but jimmy kimmel's better than half the companies that could promote a bowl because he'll do a bunch of stuff up to it. He'll, you know, he'll do goofy stuff that's gonna go, do well on YouTube. Some of the best stuff that Jimmy Kimmel does is around sports. He did a great, great, and I, and I encourage you to look it up with Boston celebrities during Deflate Gate with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and Chris Evans and Steven Tyler. I mean, just all these Boston celebrities he got to do the Deflate Gate video. And he his sports stuff's really good. So I, I, I think this will be good for that bowl game because it's better than some company that's going to come and go that decides they're going to just dump money into this yeah jimmy kimmel's better for it so yeah i'd much rather have the jimmy kimmel than the jimmy fallon bowl the jimmy <laughs> fallon bowl would be too giggly but uh yeah that's going to be interesting and uh unique that's for sure so los angeles you've got mm. the jimmy kimmel bowl coming your way so at the tail end of the last uh, off the radar, I told you all about the Suns and Four fan, mm -hmm. uh, the Suns fan who beat the mess out of a, a Nuggets fan who was just apparently a jerk. He had poured that. It turns out the Nuggets fan had poured like a beer or water on said Suns fan. Said Suns fan turns around. They kind of jostle before eventually Suns fan takes over and whips this dude like whips him badly. Uh, so Devin Booker had put out you know a thing about Suns and Four and Suns and Fours become like their rallying cry. Well, Booker said earlier this week he was looking for Suns and Four fan, and he found him because the guy's been making like the radio rounds. He was on with Portnoy and all of that. The guy's name's Nick McKellar, and apparently he's going to receive a signed jersey from Devin Booker and tickets to a conference finals game so is this like the greatest story of a fight in the stands wow of Ever. all time because everybody usually gets arrested or embarrassed this guy's like he's gone from nobody to like finals tickets yeah. near the court yeah i i think the first fight i ever remember seeing in the stands i was at a dolphins bills game in 1993 or so and maybe 94 and two drunk, a, a drunk Bills fan and a drunk Dolphins fan got into it. It was two fat guys in tank tops. And I remember thinking, like, that's, that's not going to, that's going to end well for anybody. That's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened. And now here, this guy is, he's going to get good seats. I guarantee you, Devin Booker's actually going to give him cheap seats. Oh, no. He's going to yeah. get good seats. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. He's going to get some really good seats. I didn't realize this on the Suns, by the way, that they did win in four. I did not, yeah. I guess mm -hmm. I didn't register that. And so the Chris Paul protocol. At, you couldn't have come at a, I mean, a good time. Yeah, you couldn't yeah, come at so. a better time because they might not play for another three or four days or so. Well, yeah, I mean, look, the Clippers won last night. And, two uh, to one? What, three? Yeah, three, two there. And I, I suspect that the Jazz will even that up. Yeah. So... Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, these freak fights lately, right? With the uh, Paul brothers, uh, they've been in boxing rings with the likes of Floyd Mayweather and a couple former UFC guys. Well, we you wonder how long this trend's going to continue. Uh, there's big money, obviously, to be made, but uh, another fight's apparently in the works, and it's another boxing match. Oscar De La Hoya. Oh, God. He's been talking about coming back for a while now. He will compete this summer for the first time in 13 years in an exhibition match against former UFC champion Vitor Belfort. The match will take place September 18th. They will wear 12-ounce gloves, and uh, it will be another one of these Triller exhibition events. You know, these are not really my thing. Vitor Belfort, last time I saw him, he was old and washed up and, you know, walking his way out of the UFC De La Hoya, I mean, he hadn't fought in 13 years. I'm sure there will be a, an audience for this. And they'll also, you know, put things on the card to make it, you know, more appealing, kind of like they did with that last event. But just once, I want to see a boxer get in an octagon. Why is it that it's always the MMA fighter going into the boxing ring? And I get why. is because the boxer would get destroyed because he would get kicked in the leg and have no idea how to respond to that. Or in the head. He'd get kicked in the head. But... I don't know. I'm kind of bored with the box. Like if, if you want to get my interest in uh, Oscar De La Hoya or Floyd Mayweather, I don't want to see them fight a non-boxer or an up uh, like a, a amateur boxer. I want to see them do something interesting. So put them in an octagon. I would pay for that. If Floyd Mayweather jumped in the octagon, it doesn't have to be like the champion of the UFC, but l l let it be... Tyrone Woodley or someone like that. I would watch that. I don't have no interest, though, in the exhibition boxing because it's so staged basically yeah you know I, I, it made me think of when conor mcgregor was going to fight floyd mayweather yes and, and snl did a thing and they were imitating 
Conor McGregor and the bit was he's like okay how many kicks do I get and they're like you get no yeah. kicks but if you, like I've never even thought about it that way you put it the other way around yeah I'd watch that I'd It'd watch be, yeah. I'd watch Oscar De La Hoya try to figure out how to kick somebody have him in a like he gets uh, in a submission hold have yeah. to try to figure out how to get out of that but instead it's just pop pop Pop, pop, with you heavier know. gloves than probably they normally fight with, so no one's. I mean, I did well, see Floyd Mayweather. He had a knot on his eye, which I'd never seen before, because he's like old. And Paul got him a few. Well, times, and Paul's but, twice as big as yeah, he is no, too. Absolutely. And that's the thing too. The UFC guys use way lighter gloves, oh, way yeah. way lighter gloves, and so these boxers have the big. There, I know they're not totally like. A harmless, obviously, because you still get knocked out. But I like to see some of these boxers take some shots with the the lighter gloves on. I don't think it would be as impressive as uh, the boxing exhibition side of things has been so far. This was a bizarre story. Vince Wilfork, longtime Patriots lineman, had his uh, Super Bowl rings uh, stolen last month. Turns out it was his own son, DeAndre wow. Holmes. Wilfork was arrested a couple weeks ago. Property theft of greater than three hundred thousand uh, dollars. His son took two Super Bowl rings from 04 and 2014, two AFC championship rings, a college football championship ring from his time at Miami, multiple necklaces, bracelets, earrings. And he had uh, discovered this when they were getting ready to move. Uh, his son was arrested, but, uh, man, that's just – it's not family trouble you want right there. No. And uh, sad that it would have to come to that for the son to have I to always, go steal pop stuff. I always think it's sad when you hear about a player sells his Super Bowl ring. Yeah. In this case, it's stolen, but sells a Super Bowl ring or something like that and because they're struggling financially. It's terrible. It's terrible. But, uh, yeah, that was just kind of a, a unique – sad sort of interesting story there but uh you don't you see that too often the nba is going to introduce a new ball at the draft combine uh brought to you by wilson sporting goods the new official game ball will be used starting next season or st starting with the 2021 22 season was unveiled today the reason why that's significant is not only is this new basketball but prior to this wilson agreement they had used spalding for 37 wow. years in the nba so this will be the first time they've had a non-spalding official league basketball in nearly 40 years so i, I just find I that kind of unique i didn't know if it was spalding wilson or whoever but that's that is a change okay? yep it'll be first used uh first use of it will be at the combine so jared butler or not jared butler he's not at the combine is he i think davion mitchell, davion mitchell yeah. is, is probably going to be able to to get some of that also uh saw that uh, some win totals were released for the big 12 how about uh kansas at one and a half wow Kansas at one and a half. Texas Tech, four and a half wins over under. Under. K State, five and a half. Over. West Virginia, six and a half. Oh, I don't know. TCU, seven and a half, as is Oklahoma State. Uh, yeah. Texas, they've got it eight. Under. Iowa State at nine and a half. Going under. Oklahoma at 11. Under. I'd go under, too. Yeah. And Only because. That's just yeah. hard. Even if you're great, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, I think they did a really good job here because, like, Iowa State at 9.5. Like, that, that's – I mean, they, I think they hit the nail on the head for all of these teams. So, that leaves one team. And uh, Baylor, 5.5. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's what we – 5.5. Yeah. I'd, I'd take the over. Yep, that's so kind of what we right discussed, now. too. Yeah, I'll take yeah. the over right now. Yeah. Yep, so those are some of the latest uh, totals from Vegas. So, yeah, they've got the Bears at 5.5. Obviously, you either think they're going to be a bowl team or you don't. And that's why they're, they're getting you to bet there on that. And uh, just a couple more notes. Uh, tonight, NHL playoffs. Game three, Lightning and Islanders. Paul, are you super into the, the Lightning still, the Lightning I, experience? Yeah, I the opener. I, I've watched it, but they evened it up the other day. They mm -hmm. played. It, the, the, here's the thing about this series. The other night, f look, fight 19 seconds in. Fight two and a half minutes in. Fight six and a half minutes in. <laughs> fight eight and a half minutes in. Fight like 13 and a half minutes in. And then fight as they went to the end of the period. And they had like, uh, then they had kerfuffles, not really fights for the rest of the game. But the, the Lightning took it to the Islanders the other day and, and, and got the, knocked their goalie out. Although I don't understand enough of the rules in hockey. It looked to me like the Lightning guy got shoved into the goalie and then got called for goalie interference. But it might have been just... I don't know if it makes a difference. If it, I mean, obviously, I don't know about, the you know, you get shoved into it or not. It's like pass interference yeah. or but then running that, into the punter. Then that goalie for the Islanders went out, and the Lightning went on a barrage and, and won that game. And so, I think it was 4-2. to two. Then like, Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. Yep, so Lightning tonight at the Islanders. Uh, it'll be uh, 6 o'clock 
Is this on Central? I can't tell or not. 7 o'clock start time. That series is tied at one apiece tonight in the NBA. Just one game. Brooklyn looks to close it out and book themselves a trip uh, to the Eastern Conference Finals, taking on Milwaukee. That should be an incredible game. Uh, Nets up in that one 3-2. to two. That'll be 7.30 start time on ESPN. And uh, I will make mention of that the sports book that uh, was putting out the Big 12 wins. That was the uh, Caesars sports book by William Hill. But uh, the top teams are, are the same ones that you would think of. Alabama, Clemson, same old, same old. But what, that 5.5 for Baylor will be 11 plus for those? Uh, yeah, Alabama, Clemson uh, are both at 11 and a half. Ohio State, maybe next. Or Ohio what? State, Oklahoma at 11. Georgia at 10 and a half. North Carolina, Coastal Carolina, and Cincinnati at 10. Okay. So those are some of the top uh, bets for the uh, Caesar Sportsbook by William Hill. But I'd go over on that Baylor five and a half. I'm saying bowl game. So I would, I would take over there, but definitely do not take my advice if you're risking your own money but those are a few stories that are off the radar all right when we come back uh, we'll have the five o'clock hour we'll update the u.s open but at 5 30 we'll get a live report from tory pines with art strickland baylor alum pga columnist as well when we come back the stories that have been a part of the national basketball association like just in the last 48 hours including today's story that rick carlisle is not coming back as the head coach after 13 years with the mavericks since Tim Cato had that story, what was it, two or three days ago, and Mark Cuban called BS, all hell's broken loose. Our Hayden Bumpus, his opinion on this as a lifelong Mavericks fan as well. Sikkim 365 Radio. With more than 160,000 alumni worldwide and counting, the Baylor family is growing. And through the university's expanded Baylor alumni program, the family is growing closer. With hundreds of local volunteers planning events in cities and towns around the country, you can gather with fellow Bears no matter where you are. So get connected, get something started, get involved, and make plans to get together with Baylor alumni. Visit us at baylor.edu slash alumni. Marco's Pizza, get craveable pizza made the Italian way with dough made from scratch, an original sauce recipe, three fresh signature cheeses, and premium toppings you love. Serve hot and safe. Right now, you can get unlimited medium one-topping pizzas for just $6.99 each. Why stop at just one? Order with your app or at marcos.com for curbside, carryout, or delivery today. Marco's, pizza lovers get it. Riverbend Liquor and Wine has their easy-to-access drive through open and convenient and clean in-store location on the corner of Lakeshore Drive and North 19th Street in Waco. Riverbend Liquor has the best and most extensive variety of craft beer selections in Waco and Balcones Whiskey, including Single Malt, Pot Still, Baby Blue, Rye, Brimstone, and the all-new lineage in stock. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, family-owned and operated in a hidden gem in Waco on Lakeshore Drive and 19th Street. And find out more on Facebook and Instagram. Did you know that one out of every four men have symptomatic low levels of testosterone and don't even know it? And if you think you're too young to worry about it, guess again. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy, cause weight gain, and wreak havoc on your sexual desire and performance. Petty Clinic Low T can set up same-day blood screening and results, so if you're tired of being tired, I challenge you to man up and Google search Low T Waco or go online PettyClinicLowT.com. It's a private clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Affordable, only $150 a month, includes lab work, office consultation, testosterone injections, follow-up visits compared to $395 a month in Dallas or Austin, and you don't have to fight the traffic. Petty Clinic Low T is board-certified physician consultations, will provide the best form of brand-strength testosterone available. Contact Petty Clinic Low T today. Just off Highway 84 and Old Hewitt Drive in Woodway, Petty Clinic Low T, helping men become the high-performance men they deserve to be. PettyClinicLowT.com or Google search Low T Waco. Let Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch, or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you. Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming, Warm. Welcome home. 
Stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. See all the things they can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Kisper now driving and rejected. And Baylor's on a break. Smart move here. Little delay. Wagler. Splash. Killer. The 5 o'clock hour is brought to you by Edward Jones and financial advisor Cam Heathcott. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Just a sneak for Prescott, and he's in. Touchdown. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Art Strickland from the uh, U.S. Open at Torrey Pines in San Diego joins us at the bottom of the hour. Russell Henley right now, the leader in the clubhouse, four under par. A shot up on Francisco Molinari, a shot up on Brooks Kepka and Xander Shoffley. All of them, actually, uh, Kepka and Shoffley are two back at two under par. Um, it, it's, been, uh, it's been an eventful first day, and some of the bigger names have struggled. Uh, in fact, Phil Mickelson, four over par. Uh, Morikawa then had a nice little round going on. He ended up, I think, somewhere around four over par. And some have just now hit the course two hours behind, plus they had that fog delay. I know we're going to talk some Mavericks here, but uh, if we do have time, one thing I did not have time for and off the radar was uh, the MLB writer who is in oh, no, hot no, water. Oh, no. I want to make sure we let's, get to that. Let's do the Mavericks first because it's right here in our backyard. And then also the Mavericks uh, – uh, have now had yet another change. Yesterday, Donnie Nelson out after 24 years. Uh, today, Rick Carlisle out after 555 wins, 13 years, one na- uh, world championship. But it's been a tough decade since that time. Not all of it is doing uh, because they have not won a playoff series. And so Hayden Bumpus, we go to the break. We're talking about the Mavericks. We had, the, in fact, a, a part of the Open. We discussed this, and Hayden raises his hand as we go to the break. I think I need to have my comments on the Mavericks. I'm a lifelong fan. He joins us now in studio. Uh, and, uh, Hayden, are you devastated right now? I'm not happy. I don't remember <laughs> raising my hand, though. But Well, maybe that was something else. <laughs> I, but, but, okay, seriously, you're a lifelong fan. I'm yeah. not. Craig is. Paul, you're not. We're Spurs guys. Yeah. So... What's going through your mind? What, are you confused? What? Yeah, I'd say I'm confused, a little upset, blindsided. The I, It all seems to come from the athletic article. I mean, Cuban's known about this thing's going to drop for a month, probably. So I just don't know why, where we went wrong. I'm just a little, I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, it's it's all just very kind of blindsiding and, and confusing. Like, I mean, really, because, I mean, this, this article... I mean, what did you think when you first read the article? Did you think this was going to turn into, like, the whole franchise burning down and people leaving? Did you think it was a BS article? Like, what were your thoughts on that? I, Yeah, I didn't think the franchise was going to burn down or anything. I didn't think Donnie Nelson was going to go or Rick Carlisle was going to step down. And I thought, yeah, kind of BS, but I'm sure some of it's a little true. I, we've heard Luca has issues with some of the people before, and he butts heads with anyone who has power above him because he's the best player, one of the best players in the world. All right, so let's say that article had not come out. If these moves then come, would you have expected either one of them? No, definitely not. Because that's, that's the question. Yeah, right? there were simmering about Carlisle, even though they kind of said he seemed like those who you would think are saying, in fact, even he, that he was going to be safe and come back. Because the options, what are some of the options? They're not out there except some of the retreads, right? Right, yeah. And I'm not, as a fan, I'm not really interested in Scott Brooks or. Dan Tony, you know, so, I mean, I think Mosley, like uh, Lucas said, he's vouching for, give him a shot. Or I'd love to see Jason Kidd come in. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that would that would potentially be a guy I think they might have interest in, just given the history uh, with the franchise, bringing a world title during his run. Yeah, I could see that. I don't know how, how fans overall would react to that, but I could see that being an option potentially, for sure. Yeah, I am interested to see where they go with the GM role. I mean, rumors about Finley, obviously, mm-hmm. but other than that, I don't know where you go, what you do now. If you have Finley and then Kid, <laughs> then you're bringing back the old neighborhood, right? Mm-hmm. Get Jason Terry and marketing. Uh, yeah. Get uh, 
you know, all the, all the band back together, I guess. So what were your thoughts with the way the season ended this year? Are you, as a Mavericks fan, optimistic about the future, or are you going more so through what they need to fix? Like, where are you as far as what you've seen here lately? You're definitely optimistic. I'm optimistic, but it's all dependent on what we do in the offseason. So losing Carlisle and now Donnie Nelson is weird, and you don't know what to make of it. But, I mean, the first thing you got to do is – get Luca to sign that Supermax, and you're pretty much in a good spot because you can get the pieces around Luca. People want to play with Luca. He's going to let them score, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the season ended rough. I, I remember Carlisle said after the season, maybe two days later, I'm, he was like, I'm good. I'm over it, which is not something a coach – that's a really tough loss to lose to the Clippers in that series. The way they lost it, yeah. yeah. Up 2 nothing, up 15, 30, whatever they were, 31 to 11 in the yeah. first quarter of the second game. So, all right, are you a Cowboys fan as well? I'm actually a Saints fan. I'm okay, not, well, that, not a Paul, fan. I'll ask you this, and, and Hayden, stay with us, and Craig, who's the better owner, Jerry Jones or Mark Cuban? Who's more in control, Jerry Jones or Mark Cuban? Who's more of a control freak, I, Jerry Jones or Mark Cuban? I mean – uh you're asking that's like asking you know who's a better superman christopher reaver henry Cavill. they both played superman i mean like it's the same so you're uh, comparing those two to superman no i'm just saying like you know i i think it's like how much how what are the similarities between those two um everything they both they're both have, billionaires they're are both billionaires, billionaires. <laughs> they're both billionaires they have more money than they know what to do with they can throw money at things they lo both love attention who of those two do you think medals the most jerry uh, now jerry. Jerry. Uh, i think i think mark cuban mark cuban might medal a little bit more now nah, both of them love being courtside or yeah. sideline they like being seen if there was a reality show that Jerry could fit into well, like Shark Tank, I'm sure he would he would certainly consider God, Mark it. Mark Cuban on Shark Tank is pretty good. That's a but good yeah, show, yeah. Uh, but, you know. I, he's of the, the of all the ones that are the regulars, he's the least one that I ever pay attention to. Nothing against Mark Cuban, but uh, the other ones, I, I, I just like, I, I listen to them more. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a really tough question because they're very similar and the, to me, they're almost like that Spider-Man meme where he's pointing and you know, it's just, uh, yeah. It just, Hayden, you know about what Jerry's done. Obviously, you're a Mavericks yeah. fan. Who, who, who of the two, who would you rather have as your owner? Oh, rather have as my owner? Cuban, probably. Yeah. But no. Jerry, in my opinion, is more controlling. I mean, he's grooming his own son to become the next owner, the GM. So Both have won world titles. Jerry had three quickly. Cuban had one quickly. Well, not quickly. It took a while. But he took them. I, he, both of them took over disastrous businesses the mavericks were just awful with whatever they had the perot group that then went to somebody else i forgot the guy's name and then of course jerry took over yeah. from bum bright which was a disaster yeah uh i yeah i don't know both I, have had long droughts you know you know what i do think about i mean cuban will cuban will realize what he's doing wrong quicker than than jerry will to Cuban's well, credit, the, I think one Cuban thing Mark will, Cuban did a year ago. Well, I don't know how long it's been. Remember, they had the the sexual allegations, mm -hmm. the sexual uh, uh, misconduct yeah. and harassment. I mean, he. I, I don't know if that's what he wanted to do. I don't know, but he made that quickly. I mean, he that was. Yeah, taking, he he'll react a lot quicker than Jerry will, or change his mind. I mean, he'll change his. You know, he'll he'll admit when he's wrong more than Jerry will. Is where Jerry doesn't really admit when he's wrong so much as he just. Goes in a different direction all of a sudden, and or, or, that doesn't or mean that doesn't mean that he's changed his mind about the last thing because he might be doing things at once. I'm very curious to see what happens when Stephen is legitimately in charge, because while Stephen Jones, I'm sure, has an ego, you know, and we, we've met him. I mean, sure, he has an ego. It's, I mean, he's had to his whole life put it in the back seat because his, there's no one can be in the room I, don't let's not also misunderstand how much charlotte anderson might have no I, I, I get yeah. that but like the kid jerry's kids have to be they have to keep it in the box oh no they yeah. have to keep it in the box as where jerry can be and jerry sometimes i do think uh, he's the he he goes out and takes the brunt of it because he knows that that's like he needs the focus off something else but he goes out and does that but i do I do wonder when Steven's legitimately in charge of, of the day-to-day -day operations of the football side, because Jerry Jr. runs the business side and Charlotte Anderson uh, runs the public relations side. Uh, so 
when Steven is really in charge and he's the owner of the Cowboys and he's the one who goes to the owner's meetings and he's the one who does all that, how many things that will be different because he will not have to, you know. And you don't know if any of them will be. Yeah, you don't. It, it, he won't have to stop and tell Jerry in the middle of the draft, no, we're not taking Johnny Manziel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't think Somebody so. Somebody get him a vodka tonic. Brent, who would you rather have as your alone. owner? Mark Cuban or Jerry Jones? I mean, I'd rather have Mark Cuban, I, I suppose. Uh, I don't. There's no need to make a choice, really. But if I had to, uh, I guess Mark Cuban. I mean, he's just as well off. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't see. I don't know what's going on with the Mavericks right now. Yeah, like I, I don't know if like we're we're talking. You know, uh, absolutes, and I, I have no idea what's even going on with Mark Cuban right now. Like, does he need somebody to come and help him? Like, does he need somebody to come and like reality check him? Because he went from saying it's BS on this article written three days ago to losing Donnie Nelson to losing Rick Carlisle. I mean. Obviously, it's not BS. So until he says something further and actually sheds some light on whatever the heck is going on in that front office, then I don't know what to think about Mark Cuban. Uh, but uh, if you take the article out, changing over your GM and coach when you're kind of stuck in the mud, you know, it doesn't seem strange. You know, no, it would still have been big news and everybody would have been like, oh, well, that's that's big. But if you think about, look, they've got a new star. They haven't changed much. They're, they're spinning their wheels. That's fine. But then this article comes out three days before this. Hayden, you're right. Like, you have to think something has to do with it. You, I mean, you can't. You can't not make that connection. And the only person who can sever that connection between the article and this and like, this is just a coincidence is Mark Cuban. Who and it's not it? just a co Yeah. He told, called it total BS. He, I, I don't, it's I just too, it's too hanky to me. Yeah. Uh, here is from, do you know Casey Bumpus? <laughs> yeah. Who's that? That's my older brother. All right. Casey. Die hard Mavs fan. Casey, uh, I think the article was right. There was no clear power structure and riffs had begun to form. No time to mess around when you have a generational superstar. And then he added, Cuban is the opposite of a meddler. Yeah, I agree with that. I, he doesn't, you don't, we don't hear him constantly talking about every available free agent or safety or whatever that could be available to the Mavericks like we hear with Jerry and the, and the boys all the time. Um, I don't have a problem with Cuban. Like, I would love to know what's going on. Like, I'm sure you would love to know what's going on. And I think Mavs fans are just kind of don't know what to think. Uh, I mean, at the moment, at least for me, I, I don't know what to make of, you know, going from feeling great about being up 2 0 to being out of the playoffs now. You're at least signing Luca, but then this happens with the, the coach and the GM. So I'm just at a loss. I mean, I really am. I, I don't know what to make of it. And until we see more of this offseason and see who the coach is, who the GM is, who they put around Luca, I mean, they might be a way better team next year for all we know. And all this is for naught. But until there's some clarity, then it's just going to lead to a lot of confusion and, and a lot of negative, you know, speculation going on. Yeah, there's all sorts of. Uh, so, so, Hayden, what's going to happen? I don't know. I think you just got to wait and see if some information comes out, if we figure out what happened and maybe if there was uh, involvement with Luca. I don't know. We'll see. I, I just want more information at this point. I mean, I'd, my I question that. is Luca is a once in a lifetime type guy. They had Dirk. He was, you know, they, they obviously they have this superstar. And I heard you say earlier that everybody wants to play with him. Do yeah. they? I would think so. I think you want to play with him. He's not a guy who's putting up 40 and two assists. He's putting no. up, you know, double okay. doubles, triple doubles. You know, one of the things we wondered about for years about the Mavericks and free agency, look, I, I, I think I think the part of the problem, the Spurs, like when the Spurs tried to get into free agency, when they saw which way it was going and they wanted Tim Duncan to have one last run, they went after, I mean, they went after Chris Paul. and LeBron, I mean, they got everybody in because of the, Popovich and the Olympic team, but I do think a lot of those guys didn't want to come to the Spurs because there's no pomp and circumstance. You know, like you could win 10 league MVPs in a row and they'll put one picture of you eight by 10 up in the hallway. And that's what the Spurs do. I think maybe, maybe people don't want to play for Rick Carlisle because he's bristling. I mean, you know, maybe that's Rick Carlisle. Maybe they feel like it's, that's the issue. I, I can see not wanting to play for Rick Carlisle, but I could also see why you want to play for Rick yeah, Carlisle. I I mean, he's like, a great basketball right. mind. He's just a little bristly, but uh, I, I, again, going back to, you know, much earlier in the show, I wonder about just the appeal of the city of Dallas. Like how many seasons have to go by where free agents pass on the city of Dallas over 
and over again, unless the Rangers are offering a rod money or unless they're drafted like Luca, like Luca wouldn't have signed with the Mavericks coming out of college or out of the pros. If he had his choice, he'd be in New York or Los Angeles. So I wonder what the appeal is there. And I don't know how you go about fixing that, but Tim McMahon was on uh, the low post podcast just a few minutes ago, I guess. And he said, Mark Cuban makes all the basketball decisions. Bob Volgaris is incredibly arrogant. He rubs people the wrong way. Volgaris held meetings without Donnie Nelson. And Luca once yelled at Rick Carlisle during a timeout of a game saying, who's in charge, you or Bob? So those were some of the uh, comments from Tim McMahon well, here. And you know what's funny? Just going back real quick to your point about, you know, people don't come to the Rangers, people don't come to the Mavericks. The only team that could honestly open their, if they had no restrictions, open their door free agency-wise and see a flood is the Cowboys. And... They can't because of the salary cap. And right now they don't because it's just not what they do. And, but that's the only team in Dallas. I mean, if Jerry could open the floodgates and just sign whoever he wanted to, like the NBA, if he wanted... Like the 90s when he did that. Like the 90s, he would do it. I mean, that's what they would do. And, you know, everybody, Xavier Howard, Jamal, everybody in a contract dispute, believe me, those those things with the Cowboys would be legitimate if the salary cap didn't exist in the NFL because Jerry Jones would be like, yep, sure, come play here. It's fine. That's what would happen. But uh, that's the only real free agent place that can. No, they, they, they're they they're kind of stuck. The stars are a little bit, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever, had a team that looked like they were pretty damn good. Was it well, last year? They were in the year? Stanley Cup Finals yeah, last year. So. Yeah, but. Well, and how nervous are you that this is like the make or break decision of Lucas' future in Dallas? Because he's going to be around for a little while, but like big picture when he's 32 years old and 34 years old and, you know, getting ready for Hall of Fame induction eventually. Does it make you nervous just what's going on as far as like them keeping him ultimately over the long haul? Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I know he's going to sign the Supermax. That's that's pretty clear to me. But when you're looking long-term five, six years down the road – I would say my percentage of him being here five to six years went from 10, 90% to like 80%. I still think he's going to be here. I think we're going to figure it out. I think Luke is going to have a lot of input in that and that, and we'll make him happy. I mean, that's the thing the Mavericks have to do. Is keep There's no happy. doubt in my mind that Carlisle will be a head coach though. In a league, there's a lot of, oh, no, that's a, that's he will be a head coach like, by the within, end of the week, by maybe the end of the week yeah. or month. I would think. If I, and, and look, he can be really picky. He'll, either, he'll be a coach when he wants to be a coach. Yeah. Like, that could be tomorrow. That could be two months from now. But whenever but, he wants to, he will be. But he won't have to go to a team like Orlando that's rebuilding unless that's what he wants to will do. Will Donnie Nelson be a GM or director of basketball operations? I would think else? so, yeah. I mean, do you know, I 24 so. years at in? At least yeah. a Euro scout or something. Yeah, and, I mean, at least. And, but Remember like, what he told us? We if, had I'm Por- if I'm Portland or Boston, I, I'm calling Rick Carlisle because you, know you already got a good team. Donnie Nelson told us when we had him on, it was like, what, a month ago? He misses that European ability to go over Europe and, and scout and look at talent and stuff. All right, Hayden. Yeah. I will say I'm, you know, shocked by the news originally and then not shocked because, well, we kind of had a warning on Monday when this article dropped. But part of me is trying to be optimistic and thinking like, okay, they've gotten everything they can out of Rick Carlisle at this point. It's clear there were people on the outs. I don't know, but like the Volgaris thing, that's bizarre to me. And I need more information on what the hell that's all about because it's just odd. It's very odd that this random dude is so powerful in the Mavs front office, you know, the last couple of years or something. But um, as far as, I mean, Donnie Nelson's been there for forever. Like, what else is he going to do other than what he's, what he's always done? Same thing with Rick Carlisle. Like, he's already won a title. So, I don't know. Maybe New Blood's what they need. Maybe they need a coach that's more, uh, I guess, in line with Luka and a GM that's more in line with Luka. So, I look at that as maybe this is a positive in the long run, but we sure do need some answers on this Vulgaris thing, and we need to hear some more from Mark Cuban. Yeah, we do, and uh, we'll see what uh, is next. Hayden, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Your brother Casey as well. Among others, when we come back, uh, do you want to? We got a couple minutes. Do we? We didn't talk about the MLB thing because we've got our yeah, no, because we did off the radar, and Craig brought this up, and then since that time, a huge flip of the switch (laughs) when it comes to the story. Yeah, so there's this guy Ryan Spader who's got a pretty good following on Twitter. I mean, tens of thousands of people. He's a longtime MLB writer, and he had put out a string of tweets yesterday. He's a, a self-proclaimed MLB analyst, but he's got like 65,000 followers. I mean, that's pretty dadgum healthy and way more than, than any of us have. Times but, three. Yeah, but he uh, had gone on this rant yesterday where he was accusing pretty much everybody under the sun 
of uh, cheating. And he was talking about the Royals, and he was talking about Adrian Beltre, yep, and he was yep. talking about like all these teams and all of these players, and, and pointing out that he believes that they cheated and things that he had heard, and, and la di da di da. So he had posted like a couple of days ago do not believe MLB. They are lying. The sticky stuff is going to very quickly be blamed on the players who are allowed to use it and one or two fall guys. This is MLB's failure. I mean, just on and on and on. And then he had that thread that was naming people. And then out of nowhere earlier today, uh, he had a big time backtrack because he posted, I deeply regret everything that I said. It has turned my life upside down. It was a mistake and I should not have reported on unfounded allegations. I sincerely apologize to all of those impacted. It should not have happened. It will not happen again. Stick to stats. Okay. So, all right. I want you guys to remind me in about a month to go see how many followers he has. Either he has 90,000 <laughs> or he has like 15, but I don't know what happened, but the first thing, and this is only being like transparent on this thing, somebody got to him. Oh, yeah. Somebody in Major League Baseball, somebody muscled him up, somebody threatened his life, somebody said, get that, you know what, off there. Or threatened a Come, lawsuit. Yeah. I uh, mean, or, or, yeah, well, if it's a lawsuit, if it's not true, and right. yeah, they, but if, uh, how, what are the chances? It was what I said from the beginning, and I'm just asking this question. Did baseball go, oh, my God, and they got somebody to him? Maybe. Is that possible? Yes. I also think, though, that, like, he he took some shots at some guys that have, <laughs> like, Adrian Beltre, that have great reputations. And if you're going to do that, you better you better corroborate that. He cannot just be – and, look, you can believe your soul. Like, there are things, you know, if you had an ex-Major League – like, we know enough ex-Major League Baseball players in here. If they came in and said, this happened, this happened, this happened, I would believe them. But can I report that? No, because that's just – that ex-baseball player saying that I have to corroborate that maybe maybe three times that's you know, one of those stories if I reported that even with corroboration it would be tough to go to sleep that night if you didn't have every box checked you bet, yeah I mean you better know and so I think that's also what happened here is that at least a couple people in this thing that he probably threw some darts at he didn't know and again I don't think I, I'm not naive enough to think that all all the major league baseball teams weren't doing something uh, that's baseball you know and people i mean change stat like look alex cora brought it from houston to boston you know houston just was able to use more technology because their stadium's newer that's it like the the delineation between certain people's cheating and others is is that mid Maid park has a lot more rooms with tvs in it that's yeah. it. He had, I mean, he had pegged the Royals. He had pegged Aaron Judge. He had pegged the Yankees, the Twins, the Dodgers, Adrian Beltre, Chase Utley. I mean, he he named like he said Utley was the ultimate. cheater. Yeah, he said Utley was the ultimate cheater. Uh, you know, yeah, he just went on and on and on. So Aaron Judge. But I will say, like the the, the bigger conversation is not so much about this guy. But did y'all see Trevor Bauer's in game interview yesterday talking about the new rules in baseball. He, I mean, the dude's great. Like, he needs to be an analyst when he's done playing. He called out the commissioner, didn't he? He called out baseball because yeah. he, he pointed out for, like, in a five-minute interview, like, all the things that are wrong. So, obviously, now they're they're reacting to spider attack, which has been around forever, and the sticky substances and blah, blah, blah. And his basic point was that, like, this has all been in the collective bargaining agreement the entire time, the, the don't use this certain stuff. And people have just gone on to use it. They've just kept using it as kind of one of those unwritten things in baseball of, like, this just what guys do. And now baseball's trying to act like, oh, well, we had no idea. And in the middle of a season, they're trying to just completely flip the switch. And one of his major points was, you're going to hurt guys' arms. Because if you're using a substance on the baseball that helps you get that grip, and, and he actually he had a baseball in his hand, and he went like this, and the baseball was stuck to his hand. And he's like, he told the guys that he was talking to, he said, this is a combination of like sweat and uh, rosin it can do this. So he's like, you can imagine spider tack and all this stuff. He's like, but that's, that's naturally guys are getting that kind of a grip from what's allowed on the field. So if you take... Uh, this stuff that they've been using away, that's going to change how guys throw. It's going to change the way their elbows react because now they're going to have these slick baseballs and they don't have quite a grip, and so they're going to have to change the way they grip it. So if you're suddenly tightening your grip on the ball, that's more on your elbow, that's more on your shoulder, and he, he said, you know, that's why you could be seeing some of these injuries here lately. Uh, but, yeah, he had a really eloquent response. He said, baseball got this wrong. 
He said, you know, he's a clean player and he's all for them changing the rules and doing what they had to do. But to do it in the middle of a season, like just out of nowhere, and then expect everybody to just respond to it right away like nothing's changed is going to probably get guys hurt because they're going to, again, have to change their grips. And uh, it's just not going to be good. So I, I definitely recommend if you're a baseball fan and you want a player's perspective that's really well thought out, uh, I thought that uh, Trevor Bauer had a great response. And, and he's not a fan. I don't think a lot of baseball players are. I mean, I think they, for the most part, understand why. But it's more of, but why now? But, yeah, like, why are we also, doing this now? He's never been afraid to give an opinion. He's also not against a guy celebrating against him because he mm. will celebrate. Remember that uh, scene from earlier this year. So before we take the break, come back with Art. From the, uh, from the U.S. Open. In the last 48 hours, Katie, Kevin Durant, this is from The Athletic, just to the list, a legacy game. He was 49 mm -hmm. points. Chris Paul, health and safety protocol. Kawhi ACL. SVG, out. Stan Van Gundy. Scott Brooks, out. Donnie Nelson, out. LaMelo, rookie of the year. 76ers blow a 26-point lead. Um... Paul George beats the Jazz. Some of Zion's family wants him out. So this is the next. And then Rick Carlisle out. That's just some of what we've seen uh, in, in the NBA in the last 48 hours. When we come back, Art Strickland from the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, Sikkim 365 Radio. The First National Bank of Central Texas, five locations right here at home. Waco, Woodway, Hewitt, China Spring, Martin, and Hillsborough. Familiar faces making local decisions here to help you, your family, and your business. Whether it's great times or tough times, all of us need a bank we can count on. Great people with great technology dedicated to their customers and helping our area grow and safe banking in person or use their online and mobile apps, convenient drive throughs and ATMs at all locations. I was actually in the First National Bank of Central Texas today. I saw Nina, your old, your old buddy Nina. I saw Dan Ingham. Uh, I went in there, and this is something we've never talked about on this show, but Butch Henry used to talk about it all the time. I had a bunch of loose change, you know, in my little chain, you know, jug I keep it in. And, you know, there's all these things at grocery stores you can go dump it in, and they charge you a fee. And then you, you know, you don't have any loose change anymore. Well, at the First National Bank of Central Texas, I take in my big jug of change and I fill out a deposit slip. They dump it in the thing in the back and boom, one sixteen eighty one in my account. Just like that, no fees. It's all the money goes to me. They didn't take any off the top. And that's why you need a good local bank like the First National Bank of Central Texas. Things like that and the way that they treat their customers. Five locations right here at home. At Baylor University, students find their place to shine. They're faithful friends and inspirational leaders. They're championship teammates and independent thinkers. They're on the cutting edge of high tech and in the halls of history. If you want to make the world a brighter place, you can. And if you want to shine in your own way, you can. The spark you need is already inside you. Bring it to Baylor, where lights shine bright. Boozers is the wedding ring store and more. If you're ready to get engaged or already married and want to upgrade your wife's ring for a special anniversary, Boozers is the place to go. With the largest selection of premier quality diamond engagement rings and wedding rings in Central Texas. They have seven cases with over 300 styles of rings from top designers like Natalie Kay. Choose from yellow, white, or rose gold, plus beautiful top quality loose diamonds. With an in-house jewelry, they can also custom make anything you want. Bring in a picture or drawing and let Boozers create your one-of-a-kind pendant or ring. They can even use some of your old gold and diamond jewelry to create something new. At Boozers, you'll find a great selection of quality timepieces, and Boozers is the place for expert watch maintenance and repairs, too. They specialize in expert Rolex watch repair for fine jewelry, watches, custom work, and more. Go to Boozers on Valley Mills and Lake Air Drive in Waco. Marco's Pizza, get craveable pizza made the Italian way with dough made from scratch, an original sauce recipe, three fresh signature cheeses, and premium toppings you love. Serve hot and safe. Right now, you can get unlimited medium one-topping pizzas for just $6.99 each. Why stop at just one? Order with your app or at marcos.com for curbside, carryout, or delivery today. Marco's Pizza Lovers, get it. Mm. 
takes time to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than sports. It goes for your financial goals as well. You work hard for your money, and you deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. And Tom Albers, your Edward Jones financial advisor, can help. If your financial investments aren't putting forth the effort you desire, stop by today for a financial review. Tom Albers, 4301 Lakeshore Drive, 254-776-7605. Edward Jones, member SIPC. want to know why Stonewood Dental is so successful? Listen to what happy customers have to say. It's pleasant. It's different than any other dentist's office. I really feel like they care. And it's not that you're here for two hours waiting on someone to take care of you. It's quick and easy. And, you know, I bring my kids and my kids love being here, too. They really love the treasure box. <laughs> Staff is really nice and accommodating, real friendly. You feel more like home. It's not sterile looking. Everybody has their own personalized rooms with decorations and decor, and they'll even have a blanket for you when it's cold. <laughs> I've recommended people to actually come here, and they are patients now. I really love it here. It feels like family. Learn more, stonewood-dental.com. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Niche Group Insurance Agency. With the Niche Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Niche Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Niche Group at 1-800-258-8302. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. This U.S. Open update is brought to you by Cottonwood Creek Golf Course with the same great layout. It's time to lower your handicap, play golf at Cottonwood Creek with a staff and facilities ready to host your group or tournament. Call the pro shop at 254-745-6009. Cottonwood Creek on Bagby Avenue next to Waco ISD Stadium. U.S. Open uh, early on, obviously the first round, and many golfers have just gone on the course. I just saw early on, you know, Jordan Spieth on the course, among some others. Some have just played a hole or two. At the very top, it's uh, how about uh, Russell Henley at four under par, and then uh, Brooks Kepka and Shoffley at two under par, as there's some pretty big names at the top, as you would expect. Uh, we're now joined by Art Strickland, Bader alum who's now at the Torrey Pines in the U.S. Open. Give us an update from Torrey Pines. So uh, let's start with uh, the, the court. Well, how dangerous is it for the rest of the, the, the I guess, the field when Kepka has a solid first round? I know he hit the one ball and the junk came out with a, a bogey out of it, but that, that's a pretty good sign to follow up where he was at the PGA Championship. Well, it really is. And Smokey, it answered uh, one of my three main questions I had coming in to this week at Torrey Pines. You know, admittedly, Kepka's knee is still messed up. He is far from 100%, you know, physically. But, you know what? He games it up for the majors probably more than anybody since Tiger focused wagering on majors. You know, the fact that, you know, he had to to the end, he misses the pass, you know, a couple times, and then comes back to the PGA, I mean, comes back to the U.S. Open, right there, right where he needs to be. One thing, Smokey, the first day of Champagne, and like you said, we're, we're still, you know, halfway through, but low numbers aren't winning this week. You know, leaders, four under. I, I think, you know, I haven't seen a full weather forecast for four days, but, you know, I think single digit under par is winning this tournament on Sunday. So that's great news for uh, Kepka. Great news for Vander Shopway. The other question mark I had, and the other question mark I had is, what are we going to get from Rory? What are we going to get uh, from Justin Thomas? Really both in a swamp. Speeds is broken out of his, but uh, both those guys are off a good start. So looks like a great week of balance for Father's Day. It's uh, uh, really, I think, uh, single digit in the park winning this thing, and Kepka and Shockley are right where they need to be heading to Friday. 
Webb Simpson uh, had a lot of, you know, heat around him coming in. People thought that he might be kind of a dark horse. Uh, that's pretty much over now. What happened to Webb Simpson today? Well, I have a good question because uh, I really am talking to a buddy of that he's one of my dark horse picks. Always playing well in the U.S. Open, won the Olympic club, has had like four top tens, and, you know, just didn't, uh, just didn't get it going. I tell you, another guy who's really disappointing his round is Jimmy Walker. You know, he's been playing a lot better. First top ten in almost three and a half years two weeks ago. He's even par and tied for tenth after many holes today. He really trending in a good direction. Uh, and then he makes back nine, then make a single birdie. So just pointing for Jimmy, back up tied seventy four, you know, should make the cut, but uh really I thought he was trending in the right direction. People forget Jimmy Walker has won six PGA Tour events in one major championship. You put it on the list of people who have won six major, six PGA Tour events in one major who are on the tour right now. It is a very, very short list. So I think Jimmy is there just at this point in for him today. What did you think of uh, Matthew Wolf's return to competition? Well, I'm glad to see it. I, I, I like uh, anybody who's got talent back out there. Certainly he's had a hard go. And, you know, he's not as good as Three things were predicted from him. So, you know, he said, well, if I go down to Jupiter, Florida, where all the cool kids are, and, you know, DJ and Brooks and all those guys, and I'm going to hang out with him. And it just didn't work for him. He, said he tried to be too perfect. He tried to fit in. So you know what he did? He bought a mansion. He can own that mansion back in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where he went to college. And he's got the largest house probably in Stillwater, Oklahoma right now. But he's got a coin again. And, you know, I think he had seven birdies. I think that's right. I think he had seven birdies today. Eight, eight in the first 14 holes. Double. Yeah, eight birdies yeah. in the first 14 holes, Craig just said. Yeah, and then he had a few others, as they say. But glad for me, if you will. But that's a sure to, you know, Paul. I said, everybody doesn't play golf the same way. And hanging out with some cool kids in South Florida is great for Brooks, great for DK, great for others. It didn't work for that school. And so he's back in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where he went to school, where all his friends were. He's playing good golf. That just shows you there is not one way to play golf. There's a lot of different ways. And the smart guys figure out what is best for them. Justin Thomas, two over. Uh, you, you have uh, some other uh, – Hovland, three over. Uh, Finau, three over. We mentioned Jimmy Walker, three over par. Mickelson had a rough start. Colin Murakawa uh, kind of blew up at the end, shoots four over, 75. Mickelson, uh, he shot four over, but it could have been a lot worse. He, he was off to a rugged start at three over par. Did he shoot himself out of a chance to win the one tournament he's never won? Oh, you know, I was still, you can never say never, but I, I, I think the chances are not good. I didn't think they were that good really going in, to be honest with you. I thought that that was the lightning strike we saw at, at Deal Island, oldest winner ever to win a major championship. And so I didn't think the chances were great. I think it's been well reported that. Yeah, he doesn't have a good relationship with Tory Pines. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been changed since he won here and played here. Uh, he thought he had the contract to redesign the North Course, and that got pulled away from him the last minute. So he doesn't have a good uh, feeling about this course. And, you know, it uh, wants to play at home. But a wise man once told me, Smokey, for this. You never cheer for players in sports. You only cheer for the best story. <laughs> Still winning in San Diego would be by far the best story this week. I just don't think it's going to happen. All right, one last question. And, and Arch, thank you for your time from Torrey Pines, the U.S. Open. Who is Patrick Rogers? His name's been up near the top of the board. I think he closed with a couple of bogeys or two of the last three with bogeys. Tell us about, you know anything about Patrick Rogers? Well, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers think he's a fine fellow. And, uh, you know, no, I, you know, he went to school, I believe he went to school at UCLA. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's been around, talented guy, 28 years old, you know, so, uh, never won on the PGA Tour. Uh, 
you know, but obviously talented or he wouldn't be out here. Uh, he had some success in, in, uh, on one time on the PGA Tour. And so, um, uh, I think he's with Russell Henley. I think they may be, you know, paired together on like the first group on Sunday because I'm not sure either one of those guys is around, uh, thing. But hey, Smokey, I didn't even tell you one little thing before I get back to my real duty. You know, the Art of Golf Travel takes people on great trips. We have actually got a trip two twenty times in late July, July 25th through 28th. We're playing the very same course at, at Torrey Pines, South Forth. And we are staying at Torrey Pines, the lodge at Torrey Pines, where these tour players are playing. So you can watch the Open this week. You can go play the Open course and stay at the Open July 25th through 28th with the Art of Golf Travel. Art of Golf Travel, look that up. Uh, again, Art Strickland takes men or golf groups, others, uh, women, to some of the greatest right. places around the world. And, uh, and uh, oh, by the way, Rogers went to Stanford. It wasn't UCLA, but Stanford. Okay. But he was in the mix a little bit today. Art, enjoy it. It's a beautiful place. I got a chance to play Tory in 96, I think it was, or in January or February 1997. It's a fantastic layout. Enjoy it. Thanks for your time, and, and uh, see you soon. Hey, Smokey, always enjoy it. And like I said, uh, hopefully Jimmy will get it back together tomorrow. And But I think good guys for the weekend. And, you know, Sunday, that means that we get to watch it uninterrupted. So yeah, happy yeah. Father's Day to everyone out there ahead of them. You too. That's Art Strickland with us, Baylor alum, PGA Tour columnist, and also travel agent, basically, in a way for golf groups. It's Art of Travel. You can look that up. And, and, and then they've been to Whisper, I think, Whistling Straits, which I think is, is just – an amazing setup, and uh, been overseas uh, as well. There's one other story Craig shared with us last night. There was a story about the top 50 greatest wide receivers in the last 50 years of college football. Now, you couldn't get through the, I guess it was uh, whatever the cookies It was a paywall, because yeah. I don't have ESPN Plus right yeah. now, because I don't have a reason to have ESPN Plus. So I... Of the 50 players, if I would have said, who would have been among the 50 from Baylor? I would have thought Corey Coleman would yeah. be a part Corey of that list. Corey Coleman would be my very first guess. Terrence Williams, 29. He had an unbelievable career. 202 catches, 3,334 yards, 27 touchdowns. Corey had 173 catches, 3,009 yards, but 33 touchdowns. And he did that in like two years, including 20 his last year. But they have Terrence Williams. And the note about him is Baylor produced an endless array of prolif prolific receivers at the turn of the past decade. But his 2012 production stood out the most. 97 catches, 18, 32, and 12. And, of course, the famous game he had against West Virginia. But among the top 50, Terrence Williams was at 29, Corey Coleman did not make that list. I think that had to be an oversight. I don't see there's any way you don't include Corey Coleman with the year that he had, that Bolitnikoff season. Like, no one had an answer for him. I, I just I think that's an oversight. And I did not get to watch Terrence while he was here at Baylor. That was before I arrived mm -hmm. by a couple of years. I know he was fantastic. Uh, so maybe people agree that he should be the the guy listed if there were to be one Baylor player listed. I thought there'd at least be. I thought Terrence Williams and Corey Coleman should probably both be on that list, but I definitely would have thought Corey would be the lone guy if we knew there was only one. So that was surprising to me. All right, uh, I, I I do. I think that there could have been two. In what do you think, Paul? Are you surprised by uh, that? Yeah, I'm very surprised. Corey, I mean, Corey Coleman kicked everyone in the teeth. All I mean, just burnt their ass all year long. So, I mean, 20 touchdowns in a year for a running back has, has been done a lot. It has not been done for a wide receiver quite. Well, and that was that like, much. you know, based on like the first half of the season. Like he went a bunch of games. That, didn't he get hurt or something? Or like some, he had like a little bit of a drought because I guess people caught on, obviously. But yeah, I mean, he had ridiculous numbers that year. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's smoky. They had Johnny Rogers at number seven. Yeah, I you know, there's a lot of guys who were dual threat. And what I mean by that, they were not just wide receivers, but they were punt and kick returners. For example, Paul, Peter Warwick was 12. Anthony Carter was 11. You're darn right, Peter Warwick was 12. Um, let's see. Well, let, Rogers, no, 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 7. No, no, I mean, go through the top 10. Don't just b kind of bounce around. I think because if you put, you know, a guy at if Crabtree at 12, I'd be interested to know. Keyshawn who's, Johnson was yeah, 10. Yeah. Calvin Johnson, 9. 
And and I think there mm. might be a little bit of that. What were they in the NFL type yeah. thing as well? He was a freak, but his numbers were not better than Williams and or Corey. Well, he Cole. also was, but he also put up I'm, those numbers in the in, in the bone. in the veer. Or yeah. yeah, yeah. But number, I, go ahead. Keyshawn Johnson is he a top ten all time wide receiver in college football? He was pretty good. He was the number one pick in the draft. Yeah, so. no, I know he was very very good. I just don't play in like, the pro style. I'm asking because I don't remember yeah, enough I mean, from was, watching him play yeah. that he was that good but yeah played in an era when you didn't have 105 catches although right. I, I guess maybe the, even then there was the run and shoot all right so Keyshawn is at 10 calvin johnson's at nine something here's missing on eight i'll try and find it. tim brown tim brown eight okay. johnny rogers seven tim brown again punt return and one receiver one rogers punt return and receiver heisman trophy national champion michael crabtree at six okay. he was a beast Desmond Howard, punt returner, and also Heisman, Heisman, and yeah. also obviously a hell of a receiver. If Crab, if this was, if you took out special teams, Crabtree's higher than Desmond Howard. Right? Yeah. yeah, Justin I, Blackman at four. I don't know. He did win a Heisman. Who? Howard. But because of special, because of special teams, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Is it, it, dude, he he wouldn't have won it as a wide receiver. He wouldn't have won the, the award that year. That was a combination of. And things. yet, in his entire career, he had three kick returns, three kick or punt returns. Rodgers had eight. Wow, <laughs> yeah, including one that won the the, the game of the, the century yeah, against Oklahoma. Yeah, De Desmond, or at least Howard, Desmond Howard, though, he was always like, if you punted the ball to him, you're getting good field position. No, yeah, right? you were. Yeah. Justin I mean, Blackman just, four, who flamed out. That's, that's okay. This is a. It's about college. That's crazy. Thirty six hundred yards and forty touchdowns in his career. Number three, I. Uh, oh, Devonte Smith, Larry Fitzgerald too. Now I think this is a little bit of that. I know he was good at Pittsburgh. Oh, let me tell you, I was in College Station, Texas, when Larry Fitzgerald, who was somewhat starting to get well known. And Pittsburgh rolled into town against A and M, and he proceeded to embarrass them like I've never seen an individual player single-handedly embarrass a football team the way that he did. He had like two or three catches that day that you're just like, who the blank is this dude? Like, and I knew who he was, but like after that, I was like, Larry freaking Fitzgerald, like this dude is a badass, and he tore up A and M that day. I'll never forget that. And uh, he uh, had 92 mm -hmm. catches his last year, I guess it was, and 22 touchdowns in a season. And Randy Moss at number one. I will from never. Marshall. There are things <laughs> I will never get over in my life, and the and in sports, and one of them is that Randy Moss was enrolled in school and a red shirt freshman at Florida State University when he got in trouble back home or he had been in trouble back home and he got a little bit of trouble at Florida State and they made Bobby Bowden kick him out. And Randy Moss had, came from a rough background and that's what both Lou Holtz, who, who had to rescind his scholarship, and Bobby Bowden, who had to kick him out, were trying to help Randy Moss and, and he got kicked out. And Randy Moss would have been on the team with Peter Warwick and Lavernius Coles and Ron Dugans, and we would have had three national titles. I forgot about Lavernius Coles. No, there never would have been enough footballs. One of them would have transferred into the portal. There's no portal. There would have been. It, it was a beautiful time. There was no portal. I mean, Randy Moss. Look, Marcus Altson had to play our last two games at quarterback. It wouldn't have mattered if I played the last two games. I could have just thrown it underhand up to one of those guys. All right. Uh, By the way, that Larry Fitzgerald game against A&M, he had uh, seven catches for 135 yards and three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. He, he was ridiculous that day. That was, that was something I'll never forget. We mentioned this. Uh, it's been a week or so, but it's official now. Baylor puts it out there. But we've told you that Baylor women are going to the Cancun Challenge in November. They're going to play Fordham. Uh, they will play Arizona State. And they'll play Houston among three games over three days. Uh, I don't know if it's over three days. Yeah, over three days in Cancun. So that's one of the new uh, – that's official, but th that was something that somebody had tweeted out, covers college basketball, a couple of weeks ago. When we come back, Paul Catalina's 5 at 5.55. Don Schumanor and Coffee Beans has been doing business in Central Texas since the late 1960s. They've been at a couple of different locations, including the old Lake Air Mall. They have been in the Town West Shopping Center off Valley Mills and Waco now for quite some time, in fact, for 32 years. Most recently, back in 2014, they moved right down from in the same Town, uh, town West Shopping Center, about three or four do doors down, built a brand new business in there, and a 48-foot walk-in humidor that is just 
unbelievable. You're looking for something for Father's Day coming up on Sunday? You want a gift? If your father smokes cigars, go to Don Chimador in the Town West Shopping Center and tell him Smokey sent you. Get a box of cigars. Get a, a, a group of cigars in what is a sleeve. It's kind of like a Ziploc bag for cigars that might have four or five or six different brands. If you want to go in there and say, hey, Ashton, Padron, Cohiba, Macanudo, Romeo and Julieta, Artur Fuente, you'll be fine. Your dad will be happy. And or if he has the cigars, maybe a brand new humidor to put them in to keep them moist. And plus the torch lighters in the cutter. CBD products, including Vita Dreams, it's amazing to help you go to sleep quicker and enjoy a longer lasting sleep. At Don Humidor in the Town West Shopping Center, Valley Mills in Waco. One, two. I'm in love with a man named Rudy. I'm okay with that. He knows exactly what I want. He keeps me coming back. He cooks breakfast, lunch, and dinner for me. Does the dishes too. I'm in love with a man named Rudy. Last name Barbecue. It sure is easy to fall in love with Rudy's tasty oak smoked barbecue. Next in line. <laughs> Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physician of Baylor Athletics. Our doctors specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of any and all sports-related injuries. Celebrating over a decade of service in Central Texas, our doctors are equipped to handle a wide range of issues, whether it's your foot or ankle, orthopedic spine care, your hand or wrist, knee and shoulder pain, or if you're in need of our arthritis or total joint clinic. Come see us at the new Baylor Scott & White Ted and Sue Getterman Sports and Orthopedic Center. Trust the doctors at Baylor us, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. Our goal is to get you back in the game. After my first car accident, I feared the biggest damage would be to my wallet. I expected a mountain of bills and a long, drawn-out process. But my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent was there when I needed her and helped me get back on my feet and in my car in no time. Instead of a hassle, I got reassurance and a quick recovery. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. From the first workout to the last practice, sports is an incredible challenge. Hi, this is Dan Inger with the First National Bank of Central Texas, and we're proud to support each athlete, every parent, and our educators. From families, small businesses, to the biggest industry, we're here to help. With remarkable products like instant-issue debit cards free at all of our banking centers, we've got banking ideas that fuel big dreams. The First National Bank of Central Texas, familiar faces making local decisions. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Alan Samuels is celebrating Jeep Freedom Days with the 2021 Jeep Renegade Latitude with values up to $3,750 or 1.9% for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash. See the 2021 Jeep Gladiator Overland with total values of $1,500 or 3.9 for 72 months. Alan Samuels, the award-winning customer service Central Texas dealer. Located at 201 West Loop 340, online at alansamuelsdcj.com. Come by, let's be friends. Time to fire up the grill, heat up the oven, or get that deep fryer going to enjoy the top quality products at Waco Custom Marketplace. Order 30-pound sacks of live crawfish by 6 on Wednesday. Pick up on Friday afternoon after 2 or Saturday. Enjoy the weekend. 30-pound sacks of live crawfish available right now for $4.25 a pound. Find all the crawfish boil ingredients you need, including red beet potatoes, sausage, corn cobets, and Louisiana boil seasoning. Make your order for live crawfish by Wednesday at 6. Pick up on Friday afternoon. After two for all day Saturday and enjoy the weekend. Waco Custom Marketplace, your home for fresh baked kolache, cinnamon rolls every day. Butcher shop to cut your steaks the way you want. Fresh seafood, summer sausage, boudin, house cured and smoked bacon, spices, seasoning, soup mixes, and more. And weekly gift boxes for any occasion. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco or WacoCustomMarketplace.com. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. The Sikkim 365 Radio app is sponsored by Alan Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Waco. Your friend in the car business at Loop 340 and east of 84. Come by. Let's be friends.
This is Paul Catalina's Top 5 at 555. Brought to you by Slapsticks Comedy Club. The sign is up. The kitchen is getting built. It's going to be soon. Go to slapstickscomedy.com for more information. Top 5 college bowl names in the advent of the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. And that's not one of them. But I thought I would go through and go through some of them. And uh, one bowl is actually on here twice. Because it's had two different sponsors. Hmm. Number five, the Duck Commander Independence Bowl. A college football game brought to you by the show Duck Dynasty. Which is just guys hunting ducks and living their lives. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I incredible for all the people yeah. who love Duck Dynasty, uh, kudos to you, man. Whatever you like, that's, that's all well and good. But, man, I was never happier to see a show off the air because they were playing it so much, like... And it was on A&E, right? So, like, I loved A&E, and it's turned into more of, like, the true crime again. But for a while, Duck Dynasty got so popular that everything just became... It was, like, Duck Dynasty, Dog the Bounty Hunter, Hoarders, the Storage Locker. And it's, like, it ruined the channel for me. But those dudes, man, you talk about, like, just blowing up and becoming massive successes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, I uh, I once broke up with a girl because that was her favorite show. I mean, that was the <laughs> like thing. That was the thing that like it, it just was in my head the whole time. Her favorite shows, Doug. Like, why? Well, I mean, it could be anything could else. Girl, well, girl loves she the wasn't hunt the only fish one. Millions of yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just it but just, no. it, it works. You out. ever been to that game? Did you go to the A M game? You said with your dad one time. I've been to Craig the and I, ball, yeah. We went to go watch. Uh, was it Nebraska against somebody? I forgot who it was. We did. We went to go watch that. Yeah. All right, number four, Maybe Oklahoma. the oh. Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. <laughs> this is in Tampa. And I, I couldn't tell you who's ever played in the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl, but man, well, what a. Especially considering Gasparilla is a big pirate celebration. That's well after this game. Yeah, is that's played. like not even close time. It's a huge thing like in the Tampa mm. area, but. I don't know how Bad Boy Motors connects with that in any way, shape, or form. Would that be like having the Mardi Gras Bowl in New Orleans, like in June? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. it is. It's, it's two right. months after. All right. All right. Number three, the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. The Sun Bowl's been a lot of different things. Yeah. It's been a lot yeah, of different there's things, been I some feel like. great bowl My, games my favorite thing is that every, every player who's ever played this thing has a shirt with a Frosted Flakes mascot <laughs> on it. <laughs> Yeah, they probably ate their weight in Frosted Flakes the yeah. week of that game. Yeah. I do we, like it better than the Frosted Flakes Sun Bowl, although yeah. that would probably make more sense. The Tony the Tiger kind of gives it. Tony Did you ever Tiger. go to Gasparilla, by the way, when you no. lived in Florida? Yeah. Okay. I, I, oh, Tony yeah. the Tiger is one of my favorite ever people. Uh, yeah. I went to Gasparilla. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. All right. <laughs> Number two, this was an old school one. This is in Phoenix from 1947 to 1952 or Three, five, 1955. The Salad Bowl. Never heard of this. I had never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's the reason why. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't last very long. But the Salad Bowl, and uh, I, I think I think part of the reason it didn't work out was the fact that it wasn't. That ever, well, in the concession you know sucks, you man. You just had salads at the concession yeah. stands. Yeah. It, you know how about bad you have to be? Well, of course that was a long time ago. Phoenix was still a kind of a smaller city to screw up a bowl game in Phoenix. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. And number one, we're back to the Independence Bowl, what it was forever. The Poulan Weed Eater Independence Bowl. And you couldn't call it just the Independence Bowl. No. You had to call it the Poulan they Weed paid, Eater. They paid for you exactly. to call it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Poulan Weed Eater Independence Bowl. I would be interested to know if that actually ended up paying off for Poulan Weed Eaters, if that investment in having your name yeah. on there really was. It was there for a long time. I yeah, mean, it was so there. I guess it, it must have. But, yeah, yeah you see uh, – See all sorts of interesting things, and now we've got the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. So think about all the bowl games that were not attached to sponsors forever. Mm -hmm. Even the Fiesta Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Sugar the Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the Rose Bowl. I mean, all of them. Orange Bowl. They were named after fruits or plants or something else. Well, I guess uh, it didn't work out well for Poulan because now they're a division of Electrolux Home Products. So they've been bought out and mm -hmm. changed and split. All right, thank you, uh, Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke. Thanks to Emma. Thanks to Hayden as well. My God, he'll want a pay raise after today. Jack's been wanting one. He deserves it too. All of us do. Uh, Colt, Ashley, Brian, how you doing? Uh, I'm David mm -hmm. Smoke. Have a great day. Thanks to Randy Clements. Thanks to Tommy Allison, Lenoy Jones Sr., Mickey Spagnola, and Art Strickland. Good night on Sikkim 365 Radio.
Ideal MRI is a small family business right here in Central Texas. We're open to support you while lowering the cost of health care bills. When you need an MRI, ask your doctor for an Ideal MRI. Visit us at IdealMRI.com or call us at 833-IDEAL-MRI. Stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. See all the things they can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance has been proudly serving Texans across the state for over 60 years. Call 254-772-8090 to find an agent who will provide a free review of your auto, home, and life coverage. 